Hey, I think there is a new movie out that we should discuss, guys. I don't know if you've heard of it. What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Oh, we're live. Me, Sorry. me CP, and Seth here. I mean, me, CP, and Rudy here. <laughs> All right, guys. So last night, um, I would say unexpected, but it comes to be par for the course for these Halloween trailers mm -hmm. to get dropped early because people decide to leak them out of the theaters. They um, dropped the trailer at like 1030 last night. And um, I did a reaction. Rudy did a reaction today. Me and CP were just kind of chatting about it back and forth on Twitter with some other friendly folks. And um, I decided it'd be fun to just kind of talk about the, was it like minute and 16 seconds of footage that we got? Something like that. I think and, it's 107 uh, to be exact. 107. It's it's short. Yeah. Give Mine is a title credit. and the credits and all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> 40 seconds. Tops, okay. So, yeah. so um, I want to talk about the trailer. I want to talk about our expectations, any worries. We're also going to discuss the plot synopsis of it because I, I kind of regret that I did not know or notice that the full plot of the movie in the video description because I would have discussed that further in my trailer reaction because the trailer doesn't really give you the story of the movie at all. And when you look at the plot synopsis, it raises some questions. <laughs> we'll just say that. So yeah. uh, hello, everybody. Um, CP. Hello, CP. Globe trotting, <laughs> <laughs> hanging out in Crazy Ralph's shack, and uh... <laughs> I've seen the movie Mask from 1985 one time too many, so I, I just had to put a thumbtack into Scotland. So there you go. That's you a go. really, really, really narrow reference. Yeah, I didn't get it. So I was yeah. waiting for Rudy or somebody to I laugh. I missed so. it myself. <laughs> Rocky Dennis, dude with the big... Oh, I thought you meant Jim Carrey, of course, with Cher. In... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah. great movie. Yeah. yeah. You, you can go you wherever can go you want. You can go anywhere you want to now. <laughs> yes, right. Before my time, so... Um... Exactly. <laughs> and then Rudy's joining us. Rudy was the only friend who decided that uh, me and CP and Halloween were worth giving time to, so... <laughs> Again, you invite, uh, I'm, what time, what do I wear? That's all yeah, I need, man. Exactly. There you go. So what's going on, everybody? Uh, so, yes, the trailer debuted last night. Fans have been going batshit crazy, harassing Jason Blum and everybody else, trying to get this trailer. We finally got it. Was it worth it? I don't know. But we got Halloween Ends coming out in October. And um, we've got various reception among the three of us. Um, I think I've probably been the hardest on this trilogy. CP's been... A little more in the middle, especially with the um, <laughs> the the first cut of Halloween Kills that we saw, and, and Rudy's been much more positive. So I'm glad that he's with us, so we can kind of balance all yeah. this out, and we don't come across as a bunch of negative haters. But um, <laughs> I'll start with you, Rudy. So I know that uh, you were really um, positive on Halloween Kills, especially at least when it came out. So what is your before you even saw the trailer? What was your kind of hopes or expectations for ends? What did you want from it? Well my expectations are incredibly low because mm -hmm. you know, the conversations we've had with the other lives we've had, there's been so many changes to the script. I I've heard people have seen, you know, advanced screenings of what kills was supposed to end. Mm -hmm. And then with ends, I heard it was supposed to be the same night of the whole trilogy, but now they've jumped four years into the future mm -hmm. and COVID supposed to be involved in it now. So my expectations are as low as possible. Mm -hmm. And again, when I watched when I watched the, the trailer this afternoon on my lunch break, I was like, eh. it's like it's it looks like a Halloween movie. I have nothing negative or bad to say about it. The <laughs> it only does. negative I can say is like, this is nothing that we haven't seen before. This is the same thing. Laurie Strode fighting Michael, you know, who's going to win, I think. And there's knives and there's going to be blood. And eh. yeah, I'm just going to see it. I'll be there. But it's like, yeah. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> So CP has got an interesting space uh, because he was able to watch Halloween Kills uh, almost two years before everybody else. Yeah. Wow. He saw the original cut. It was a little bit bloodier. There was a different ending. Yeah. He was hyped. He had me hyped. He had Brian. They, they hyped. killed Anybody... kids in that movie. They, yeah. I was like, yo. Yeah. Right, Anybody that he could talk to, I was just like, dude, because me and CP were pretty in line with our thoughts on Halloween 2018. Like some really great things about it. It's definitely mm -hmm. some missed opportunity, especially with the comedy. Hopefully they can do something better in Kills. And so he had me sold. This is going to be a big step up. Mm -hmm. And I actually liked Kills less. And he was shocked. And then he saw the version that I saw. <laughs> and, <laughs> so, and I'm like, what, what, 
What they do with the ending? ending? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so pick it up from there, CP. Your, your thoughts on on the way that kills it, trans. It's hard. And... <laughs> it's so hard because, like, I know of Halloween Kills as a different version. Like, I I mm-hmm. I know what it could have been, and I like what I really like what it could have been. But what what we have to go off of, it's like okay <laughs> well well now what uh it, it it just doesn't have the same oomph that the the original ending did um and they keep well, i said this last night uh, on twitter they introduced these new characters these new strodes uh the two new strodes were down to one and it seems like the star of the show for the third Halloween film is Lori. So <laughs> cool. Thank God we introduced it, all those new characters just to have Lori do everything. Mm-hmm. It would have been it would, like, I, I, that's what people were saying for the longest time. The, the, the granddaughter is going to be the one that saves the day and she's going to be the new thing and blah, blah, blah. No. No, just gonna Jamie Lee Curtis. She got a she got she combed her hair for the trailer, and uh, <laughs> she's so wouldn't it make sense head. to let the granddaughter take over for the potential of sequels in new That's... ground, just other cities, other locations, other holidays, maybe? Right. I don't know. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. They're Star Warsing it. They're they're totally Star Warsing it. Yeah, oh. so I um I, I, I've warmed slightly to Halloween 2018. Uh, to be honest, if it wasn't for all of the just toxicity that surrounded that whole release, I probably would have grown a little more positive on it quicker. But uh, in hindsight, I like it a little bit more. Still have the same issues, still have the same overall thoughts. But it, it's a it's a good Halloween movie. You know, I wouldn't say that it's amazing like a lot of people, but it's it's a good Halloween movie. Kills, Kills yeah. oh, the like, more the that I. Sorry. You're talking yeah. about the first one, right? Okay, sorry. 2018, yeah. Kills, I still have a lot of issues with. It's fine if I want to watch some gore. Uh, I still think that Myers is badass and everything like that. But my issue with Kills, aside from just story stuff, was that, you know, we, we retcon the entire franchise to get rid of the sibling angle. And we go back to where the first film where Myers was definitively a human with some, you know, supernatural edge, if you call it. And then you get the Halloween kills and you get to the third act, you get to the end where the town finally has them cornered. They ain't taking this shit no more. And they're all taking them down. I'm like, cool. This is interesting. This is different. And um, then you get Myers is down and just gets up like nothing ever happened, slays everybody. He's impenetrable. You know, he's the Hulk at this point. He's got plot armor like a motherfucker. And so to me, that took a little bit of the the stakes away it took away a lot of the interesting angle of what makes myers different and so it just kind of left me cold going that's weird i don't really like that angle i don't really care about judy greer's character so this doesn't have any kind of emotional thing and then the scene that was cut from the original cut that i heard from cp really took the wind out of the sails of that ending because it just kind of ends abruptly and i'm like okay and then when you yeah. find out in hindsight that they are now no longer doing the third chapter in the same night, they're pushing it for years and all of this stuff. It makes that ending even weirder because if you can, if you get ends and then you can watch them as this three movie, you know, one long thing that yeah. 2018 goes right into kills and kills goes right into ends with the way that it ends abruptly in hindsight, it'll make a little bit more sense, but yeah, I, I've been nothing but confused with the info that we've gotten from this movie thus far, uh, with the the way that they decided that with all of the delays and them not being able to shoot it, that they've changed some things. It's not going to be the same night anymore. And COVID, I, I still don't know. I think that Jason Blum probably regrets saying that because that's all anybody's focused on. But I don't know to what degree this COVID thing is even going to matter in the story. Is it just going to be a mention? Is it going to be something that just kicks off the movie is it going to be prevalent throughout it i don't know but that's just a very weird thing to say that's what and michael myers is yeah exactly and and so i I know how they're going to use it like there's going to be a business or a hospital that's been shut down because there's no one to staff it and it's just abandoned and he's been living in there i bet you something like that 
<laughs> I had a really sick thought that it would be hilarious just for my own amusement if they like <laughs> the movie picks up and then it gives you like the Star Wars opening crawl <laughs> and Michael died from COVID <laughs> and Lori still thinks that he's out there and she's just <laughs> <laughs> like something like that just to make all the fans flip out and I can just laugh in the theater like Robert De Niro. Mm-hmm. But uh <laughs> but yeah, so uh no, that's not the real drum dumbs. But uh, I uh, I watched the trailer last night. I had low expectations. I just kind of wanted to just satisfy my curiosity. And it, it's a weird double-edged sword. Because on one end, I like the fact that you have a trailer, especially from Blumhouse, that doesn't really tell you anything about the movie. Because they've kind of made a business out of just giving you the whole movie in this little two-minute package. Yeah. Uh, and so I like the fact that I watched the trailer and I know nothing about the movie aside from Lori's going to be fighting Michael. And it's like, well, no shit. Knew that. On the other end, it doesn't do what a trailer is supposed to do. It doesn't get me excited for the movie because I don't know anything. I don't know anything more than I did the day before the trailer yeah. dropped. Like, it's like, yeah. Michael, and people are screaming and they're fighting. And I'm like, well, this, you could have told me these are deleted scenes from Halloween 2018. Hey, show and you I would two believe little you. clips. That's really yeah. it. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and so the trailer was fine. Like it, it, it's, it looks. Mm. Jamie Lee Curtis looks badass. Michael still looks good. The mask is exactly the same. There's nothing new or wild with that that we can tell. Um, you can start to read into the trailer a little bit more with all these rumors, with some things that have been talked about that might be in the movie. But the more interesting part to me was not even the trailer. It was the plot synopsis that got dropped in the video description, which I didn't even notice. When I did my trailer reaction, I noticed it afterwards and did a follow up little YouTube short. And so I'm going to read this. <laughs> this is Lori Strode's last stand again, right? After 45 years, the most acclaimed, revered horror franchise in film history reaches its epic, terrifying conclusion as Lori Strode faces off for the last time against the embodiment of evil. Michael Myers and a final confrontation unlike any captured on screen before. I'm going to stop there, but is that not the sales pitch that we got before 2018? Yes. Like you're reading the 2018 synopsis, right? As a a trick. That's what you're (laughs) And we'll pick up on this. We'll talk about a little bit more, but come on guys. The last sentence in this paragraph is what's really interesting to me, which we're going to talk about a lot. Only one of them will survive. Cool. Icon Jamie Lee Curtis returns for the last time as Laurie Strode, horror's first final girl. She was not the first final girl. Yeah. And the role that launched Curtis's career. Curtis has portrayed Laurie for more than four decades now, one of the longest actor-character pairings in cinema history. When the franchise relaunched in 2018, Halloween shattered box office records, becoming the franchise's highest-grossing chapter and set a new record for the biggest opening weekend for a horror film starring a woman. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay, now the plot. Four years after the events of last year's Halloween Kills, Lori is living with her granddaughter, Allison, and is finishing writing her memoir. Michael Myers hasn't been seen since. Lori, after allowing the specter of Michael to determine and drive her reality for decades, has decided to liberate herself from fear and rage and embrace life. Let me stop there real quick, because something's hilarious about this to me. (laughs) So, you have Halloween 2018. You have Laurie Strode that has, um, Jesus Christ, give me a second. No problem. Fucking 12-year-old is just relentless. Two fat Greeks. Two fat Greeks. Yep. So anyway, you have Halloween 2018. You've got Laurie Strode, who for 40 years... The three her, her high school friends getting stabbed has consumed every thought of every minute of every day of every year since 1978. <laughs> then her the own daughter gets butchered and she's like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's get a new lease on life and write a book. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little bit funny. But anyway, uh, so, yeah, so she's, you know, to liberate herself from fear and rage and embrace life. But when a young man, Corey Cunningham is accused of killing a boy he was babysitting. It ignites a cascade of violence and terror that will force Lori to finally confront the evil she can't control once and for all. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. So, that last sentence is yeah. so, like, just thrown in there. It's like, wait, what? 
it's new guys threat by what Corey so, cunningham yeah so michael myers butchers <laughs> judy greer's character then i guess just disappears just pieces the fuck out of how haddonfield out of nowhere for four years i'm assuming that she's still living in haddonfield uh, she's taking a new lease on life with her granddaughter. She's writing her memoirs. Life is good. And then random new character, Corey Cunningham is accused of killing a boy. He was babysitting. And this is going to reignite all of the fear and the chaos within Haddonfield or just Laurie Strode. Um, again, double-edged sword. Because on one end, me personally, I've been saying for a while, one of my bigger criticisms of this new trilogy is that I want something different. I want something unique. And uh, so far, this new trilogy to me... It's the same shit! <laughs> so... <laughs> that was good. <laughs> so on one end, this sounds really unique. It sounds bold. It sounds interesting. But it also sounds so fucking strange that it could be a disaster. And there's shots in the trailer where Michael, that one where Michael opens up the door and Lori's already there with the gun. He's got his fingers back. And so that's either a dream sequence or this Corey guy is like a Myers copycat. <laughs> and we're going to have a copycat Myers in the movie and then eventually end with the real Myers coming back. Oh, do you think they're going to try to pull a Halloween four or, a or the spirit? Five? Yeah, the transfers <laughs> to a new body and a new beginning. New tales to tell. It's the um, house. It's all in the house. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like the plot synopsis and these things that I've been hearing, they're raising nothing but massive amounts of questions. And so um, really quick before I continue, I don't want to let this super chat go. Uh, Toverman, you guys are great. Missy CP, hope you're well. Hope your head, keep your head up. Rudy and Cody, the man, the myth, the legend. Keep it up. Awesome. Thank you. Um, didn't want to miss that because that was back at the beginning of the show. Uh, I'm a diehard fan of 78. I have a bad, bad feeling. Well, hopefully we all watch the movie and we're like, whoo, that was actually pretty awesome. Don't go hey on guys. Twitter with that diehard shit. Yo, yeah. Hey, guys, hope all is well. Based on the synopsis, I'm curious if Corey's character attempts to prove his innocence by finding Michael. Just a thought. <laughs> Sounds like a shitty way to prove your innocence, but maybe. Yeah. Uh, anyway. So, yeah, there's a lot of ideas in here that, that sounds like a little Halloween <laughs> for like maybe the, the evil can transfer into other people. Um, there's a little bit of like, <laughs> I, I don't want to go as far as to say Friday the 13th, a new beginning. But are like, are we going to get the Halloween's Roy in this movie? <laughs> <where> <laughs> he's going to be walking around fucking people up and then get pushed onto a compactor and it's going to be like that's not michael and all of a sudden michael comes out the fucking closet in like the third act like i don't know it, it raises so many questions to the point where i don't know if it's a good or a bad thing but i'm eternally more curious about this movie now just based off of the text underneath the trailer that was supposed to get me excited it sounds like they're trying to set up something new, and like again for future sequels with these new mm -hmm. characters. But and... I, I thought mm. they had the three set up. Like I thought, like it was, you know, they they, they wrote it for three. They had it set up for three. That everything's good, and suddenly they just said, "Oh, COVID fucked everything up, so we're we're just gonna take a left and do this shit now." Yeah, in hindsight. And again, like I'm not a Hollywood writer, and I, it's easy to do a, the Monday morning quarterback thing. I almost feel like the trilogy would have been more interesting if you, you know, you had similar setup. And we've talked about this a hundred times, CP. At the end mm -hmm. of Halloween 2018, during the whole, you know, Trap and Michael thing, Judy Greer gets taken out. Yeah. And then in the second film, be really ballsy, and by the end of it, Laurie Strode gets taken out, and then that leaves the granddaughter right. to be right. the brand new heroine. Uh, that would have been perfect. Yeah, right. there, there's something exactly. about that that would have been kind of interesting. But like I watched it's the trailer. sort of predictable, but I guess not. <laughs> and it's not always a bad thing, you know what I mean? But but yeah. on the side of or on the, the subject of predictable, like I watched the trailer and I even made this joke in my trailer reaction. I watched the trailer and my first response to the trailer was breaking news, guys. Michael Myers is fighting Laurie Strode in this movie. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> and let's see, like, OK, Halloween 78, Halloween 2. H2O, first 10 minutes of Resurrection, Rob Zombie's Halloween, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, 2018, and Kills. So this is going to be the ninth film where Laurie Strode 
versus Michael Myers. And so that, that was one of the reasons why I got a lot of heat back in like 2017 when they did the big announcement and everybody lost their shit that Jamie Lee Curtis was coming back. And I was like, I was really excited at this, like David Gordon Green, you know, bringing it back. And then this kind of took the wind out of my sails because we've seen this story already a bunch of times. Like, it just feels like there should be at some point some creative idea to do something different with Michael Myers. And especially the fact that they took away the sibling angle. Now they don't have to write in some bullshit about Lori had a secret daughter or aunt or fucking niece or anything like that to bring him back. It can just be he's just the dude chilling out in Haddonfield and comes out every fucking, you know, 365 days or whatever. But mm -hmm. um, so that that's where I'm curious. I'm curious if this movie is going to do something interesting and different with this premise or if it's just going to be like this really weird left field like distraction for the first two acts. And then it's going to end with another Halloween 2018 third act where you know, she's walled up in a house and sets a trap for Michael. And like the, the description says only one will survive. And that's something that has me concerned because yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> only one will survive and I, i've said this everybody always has been asking me like who, what do you what's the ideal ending for halloween ends or what would be the worst ending and we've known for years that um, at some point or possibly still mustafa akkad had like this legal um ramification thing where it, to have the rights to the halloween franchise they weren't allowed to kill michael myers ever and that's why you got that stupid ass beginning of halloween resurrection where they're like i know you thought we killed michael but that wasn't michael and we all know that jamie lee curtis has got a lot of creative control and she's been very hands-on with the script and female empowerment and all that stuff since 2018 and so i don't know if they're gonna kill either of them or if they're gonna kill both of them or, or is there even a legal ability to kill michael myers like i don't rudy what what would be like your what would be your ideal way for this to go down and what would be the worst way for it to go down? Oh my God, that's a good question. Oh shit. Well, ideally what I'd like to do, I think would be a great place is go to Michael's home and set up internet cameras mm -hmm. in every room. <laughs> <laughs> Get Buster Rhymes. I'm sure he's available. We'll, we'll work something out. I don't know. <laughs> what I would like, oh God, so... I have a lot of thoughts, but again, what I would like to see in ends is Lori die within the first 30 minutes. Oh. Kill her off early on. Nobody would expect that. And we'd be, oh, okay, what's going to happen now? Mm -hmm. And Michael veer off and he has a showdown with, you know, Corey Taylor, whoever the guy was. Nice Corey homage County. to her mom. Too. I'll watch that movie yeah. all day. <laughs> Corey all day, man. Bring it. But nice anyway, Corey Cunningham. <laughs> yeah. And, and the showdown would be with the granddaughter. So it'd be poetic. You know, mm -hmm. the bloodlines is dying. Now here's the last bloodline, the last strode fighting Michael. And mm -hmm. of course, she comes with the comeuppance and gets him killed. So I think that would be there's got to be some loss. There's got to be a heavy toll for all of us fans to to see and feel. There has to be a payoff mm -hmm. after all these years, because what emotional payoff have we had since 78? Not much, really. Mm -hmm. So I think we give us a huge payoff like killing Lori and having some emotional weight there. Or maybe he kills the granddaughter and Michael continues to live, live on. I don't know. But that's what I would like to see. Something tragic, something unexpected. Um, worst case, like, you know, it's going to be lazy. You know, Lori's getting him. We're going to have this two hour battle. You know, nothing's going to happen. And then she ends up winning and she's going to mm -hmm. kill Michael. And that's how it's going to end. That's my worst case. But y'all okay. go ahead. I got more thoughts in my head, but I can't channel them out right now. But you go ahead. What's, what's your idea? CP, how would you prefer this whole thing and the this trilogy and what would piss you off if it happened i i, I, I i'm too confused to use the word pissed mm -hmm. like whatever they throw <laughs> what would make I, you flabbergasted <laughs> on the way out <laughs> uh you know if they kill both the strodes i would be like what the fuck mm -hmm. uh I, I like it. It felt like they were setting us up for for the granddaughter from from jump. Mm -hmm. You know, with with the match shots in eighteen, it was just like, all right, all right, I got it. You're 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 doing parallels. Passing the torch. Here. Yeah. yeah, cool. I'm with you. All right, and then something happened. Uh, I mean, shit. The last shot in 2018 is the granddaughter with with the with the knife in her hand, and that's the final shot. That'd be mm -hmm. a good booking, yeah. Yeah, 
And the final shot in the original Halloween <laughs> kills is Lori with the knife in her. <laughs> Never mind. Um... I want the CP cut. <laughs> <laughs> the oh. funny thing is that that shot is in the trailer for Halloween Kills. Oh, I know. The when you told shot... me the when you told me what happened, I I saw. I was like, that was in the trailer. Like I just yeah. pictured it immediately. It was this mm -hmm. visual bookend. That was the, the final shot. Kills shop. opens up zooming out from the knife. Mm -hmm. uh, what, was, what was I talking about? <laughs> Couple super okay. chats real quick. Uh, yeah. Tom Roberts, Halloween ends. Michael made me do it. Halloween kills was such a disappointment. I think I'm going to be skipping this. None of us are skipping it. Let's just be yeah. honest. We're all going to fucking be there. We're all whores. Yeah. Ryan Malay, how many Michaels do you think we're getting? I mean, uh, I would prefer one, but it seems two. Caleb, as long as they don't pull a resurrection mask switcheroo as the real Michael escapes, I'll try to remain happy. Ooh. Desi, do they kill Michael Myers early and take the road of evil moving to someone else and Lori having to kill evil? Is it the radio tower? Radiation makes you crazy? I don't know. I mean, they've said... <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis has gone on record and said this movie's going to piss a lot of people off. And I don't know what that means because Thanks, sometimes Jim. people say that to be edgy. Um, like, it could mean if your favorite character dies, it's going to piss everybody off. It could mean if Michael Myers dies, it's going to piss everybody off. It could mean this shit's going to get fucking weird and none of you are going to like it that are sitting here screaming for this trailer. It could mean any of that. Um, oh, one more. All the talk about Halloween ends being influenced by Christine and that Corey Cunningham is similar to <laughs> Artie Cunningham from Christine. Corey might be obsessed with Michael like Artie is with the car. Yes, I've also heard that. Um, Jason, Bl or not Jason Blum, David Gordon Green consulted with John Carpenter and asked him if the script for Halloween ends was to Christine. And I have to, if he's asking that, I have to have some doubts that the the fact mm -hmm. that they're announcing the name Corey Cunningham was accidental. So is this guy going to be so obsessed with Michael that he's going to put on the mask and put on the jumpsuit and pop the collar up like Elvis and go around and just start terrorizing Haddonfield just to have some fun? Is it actually going to be like the evil embodying him? Um, I, I don't know, but... Um, Hmm. Question marks. <laughs> so many question marks. As far as I'm concerned, like before I even knew anything about this Corey character, the way that I've answered this question about what would I prefer with this ending and what would piss me off? What would piss me off is if they don't have the balls to kill either of them. Because that's just going to frustrate me. It's like, what the fuck is the point of all this then? Mm -hmm. um, my ideal ending would be for them to take each other out. Like I want a definitive end to the story. If you're going to give us this trilogy and continuous to use the same fucking sales pitch that they're using about final confrontation, the most epic conference, like the same sentences to keep telling us, this is it. This is the one. If you're going to go that far, you better fucking deliver. Otherwise uh, you're going to lose my faith completely for anything you have in the future. And um, I, I don't even care. Like, it's going to frustrate the shit out of me if there is still this legal clause that they can't kill Michael Myers because for the same reason that I was disappointed with him turning into, you know, uh, a piece of steel by the end of Halloween Kills is that takes away a lot of the tension, that takes away a lot of the stakes, and it feels like you might as well just... We're just going to watch him slay the entire town because no, nobody's ever going to be able to do anything about this that isn't named Buster Rhymes. Mm. And mm. Uh, if Lori doesn't die... Again, it's just going to feel like what was the point of this this entire trilogy? So that that's what would frustrate me is if we have all this build up and nothing significant happens. Usually, like if we go back and think about trilogies, usually the the first movie gives us hints and nods to how it's going to end. Mm -hmm. Watch, we find out that the reason Michael is the way he is is because that doctor did some tests on him, injected him with some experimental <laughs> chemicals, and that's and that's why we have a whole army of Michaels just sitting there just waiting to, to awaken or whatever the case is. And I bet you Michael ends up back there. He kills Lori, and he ends up back at the sanitarium with a different doctor. And it's a good bookend to that trilogy. My dog's barking right now, so sorry about that. Hmm. But... That's what I'm thinking. So the disappointment. We're not gonna have that with, finale, but it just ends where it began. It ends with him in that little checkerboarded place outside with the yes. the guy, and, and Allison's outside screaming through the chain link fence. Say something! Like, <laughs> <laughs> say that. Yeah. 
or oh, they did introduce the silver the silver or shamrock mask in in kills so mm -hmm. what if we find out michael had a silver shamrock mask this entire time and he's been powered by rock from stonehenge and that's what gave him his power you said powered by rock and i'm thinking like metal like he's just been he's been listening to fucking like iron maiden underneath the mask for three movies. i don't know oh. I don't know. It could go so many different ways. Uh, they'll catch up on these super chats. I just got off work, saw you guys alive. What did I miss? Did uh, Evil Die Tonight? My big twist, Aaron, podcaster from 2018, takes the mantle. Hey, there you go. Hmm. Uh, you didn't miss, but we're, we're just talking about the trailer, expectations, worries, stuff like that. CP needs the extended cut. I've yes. seen it. I fucking seen it. <laughs> yeah, he saw the extended, extended cut. <laughs> Only fan of Halloween 1, 2, and 3. Not sure how you would get a new interesting story in a Halloween movie. Can't wait to see a review of Halloween Ends. That's all. Good job, Cody. Yeah, that's that's kind of... The, the series has been very redundant story-wise. Um, hey, 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 hey. Giddy up. Hmm. I'm not single, but I appreciate the compliment. I'm very not single. <laughs> 2018, kid talks about ballerina and dad's death was not acknowledged kills the black couple male doesn't know how to use a gun but female does Lindsay swinging bricks with enough force to cause damage is not believable should have given it to doyle hmm doyle. okay the basis for the misfits yeah yes <laughs> oh doyle rules <laughs> cbmf i just would i just feel like this whole trilogy feels like wasted potential if it wasn't for h2o this trilogy would have more weight behind it and honestly you can't beat the third act and last shot in h2o yeah, and that's been the thing for me. Uh, like I know H two O is not popular amongst I love what it. do they call them true fans, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I've always really liked that movie despite some of its flaws. You know the masks and stuff like that for certain. Um, and I, I've always felt that. Like I feel like that that version of Laurie Strode was pinnacle Laurie Strode to me. That was a perfect ending. Yes, it was. Uh, it was the perfect ending, and, and I like the way that her trauma, her PTSD. I, I like the way that it was portrayed in that movie much more than I do this trilogy to where it was more believable. Um, it wasn't like every moment of every second of every day. That was all of her thoughts. It was just something that fucked her up. You know, occasionally she was always worried for her kids. She had no relationship with her kid because her, her fear of him losing his life. So it's almost like her love for him prevented her from even being able to have a relationship with him. Like that, that stuff just worked for me. And that whole third act, even though we could have had a better Myers, I, I thought was awesome with her taking the axe, locking everybody out, screaming in the street for him to bring his bitch ass back outside. Like, that was just an awesome movie. So, yes, if H2O did not exist, I probably would have liked Halloween 2018 a lot more immediately because I'm like, oh, this is fucking cool. Like mm -hmm. Sarah Connor mm -hmm. um, version of Laura Strode. But it kind of felt like been there, done that. Um, so, yeah, I'm with you on that one. Uh, it's not a very popular opinion. A lot of people say that 2018 buries H2O, but um, I don't think it's quite that simple. I disagree. Yeah. There is an obvious dumb down of males for female empowerment undertone in these movies. I think no. what's missing is a smart, strong no. male. No. Um, I, I wouldn't no. quite agree with that. I mean, there's certainly, I mean, it's Blumhouse, so they're not immune to taking that route once in a while. <laughs> don't but, watch the They Them trailer. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, I mean, this has always been about Laurie Strode, so I don't think there's any p place in her story for, like, uh, even Will Patton's character to kind of rise up and be somebody that has to protect her. She's supposed to be the one that's large and in charge. Did you yeah. miss Anthony Michael Hall in Kills? Yeah. He, <laughs> he was a made, man. made him the bitch immediately. <laughs> 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 but to each their own. We all see movies differently. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Uh, where that we had one more oh we do prediction Lori dies and so does Michael that's a prediction you're not going to top H2O in terms of satisfying end it was perfect timing if it wasn't for resurrection there would have been no reason to do this exactly I, I choose like eventually once this movie ends I will do a ranking and, and rank like the, the Michael Myers timelines the choose your Jeez. adventure versions of this. So mm -hmm. my preferred timeline thus far, and maybe ends will change this. My preferred timeline is Halloween one, Halloween two, H two O end. There's no resurrection. Uh, to me, that's the, a, like almost perfect Halloween trilogy. So I, I'm on that end of the fence. 
Halloween ends will have same ending as the Northman. <laughs> 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 that would be fucking hilarious. That trailer looked like a fan film more than anything. I don't care, which sucks because I love Halloween. First horror movie at three years old. I don't know if I would say it looks like a fan film. It was just a lot of. I, it was a teaser. Was, something they a put lot together of, the last minute just to shut people up. Yeah, it was a lot of third act type shit for Rudy, Rudy, kind of cut you, together. Can you explain something to me? Are there sure. bad? Are there bad Halloween movies? Yes. <laughs> Is it hard for you to say that? No. <laughs> Continue. That was a good point for the review. Yeah. Why, why? Why does it seem like these extreme true fans, like if if you give any sort of critique, you're like you're you're trolling, you're hating on the movie, and it's just like. Guys, not every movie's perfect. Like, what? Yeah. Just just because Michael Myers is in it means, bam! I, I got to see it, and everything's right. I, yeah. I, I don't understand that. And we see that all the time with fan bases. I mean, they're just so devotedly devotedly blind mm -hmm. to what they love. They just can't see the flaws. And, you know, I'm guilty of some things like that. But you know, if you just step back, sure. nothing's 100% pure. So. They have to. You have to be. A, uh, there's nothing wrong with being a fan, but you have to be objective at the same time. Of course. Yeah, and I the bad ones. I enjoy. It's a guilty pleasure, but you know, I see it once, maybe every couple of years. Yeah, They're yeah, that bad. Anything with Paul Rudd, I'm quicker. like, oh god, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm bad. a big Friday fan. I could, I could, I have no problem saying the second half of the franchise is awful. Like yeah. it, it, it. I don't. I don't understand. That's the weird thing, and I always get pushback on this. And again, I can only speak from my perspective. Everybody's perspective is different. But I only see this type of treatment, this type of behavior, this type of mindset from extreme Halloween fans. Mm -hmm. yeah. I never see people from Friday the 13th act that mm -hmm. way. I never see Nightmare, Child's Play, none of them. I never see anybody. Like, I dabble a lot in the Nightmare fans, a lot in the Child's Play fans. I never find anything close to what I find in Halloween. Like, everybody, for the most part, with the few exceptions and they usually come across very respectfully even when they say this there's nobody that i really interact with hardly in the nightmare phantom that's afraid to say freddy's dead oh what yeah. the fuck yeah. the remake what the fuck did you do like it just seems like for whatever reason in this fandom and i don't know if it's because it's just the fandom that's the hottest right now or what maybe we'll maybe i'll change this conversation whenever we finally get a new nightmare movie between now and my death <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, it, it feels like if you say anything whatsoever, it's like you're attacking the franchise, you're attacking the fandom and everything. And it's just like, mm. no, I just I want the fucking movie to be great. Like, yeah. Yeah. none of us walk into the movie wanting it to be shitty. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of people out there that believe that about me, especially like I walk in like, I can't wait to tear this a new ass mm. when I get home and turn the camera on. I'm like, what the fuck uh, is the point of that? I like, expected you to say that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? Got a guy on Twitter last night that was, uh, he's like, everybody knew what your reaction was going to be before you even filmed it. Yeah. Yawn. And I'm like, what, my honest thoughts? Fuck off. <laughs> Critique? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I, I I wanted to walk into 2018 and walk out going, fuck yes, that was awesome. He's mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. I wanted mm -hmm. Halloween Kills to be like, god damn, that was so much better. Like, I, I'm going to walk into ends and hope that I walk out going, Man, it was a rough road, but we fucking nailed it with this third one. Like, I, I want that because there's no reason not to want that. There's no reason to not want an awesome Halloween film because I like the Halloween franchise and I want more good films than bad films. But not only that, even for my own selfish reasons, I want this shit to succeed like a motherfucker so that when Nightmare comes back around, they're like, hey, right. Halloween's kicking ass. Here's a big ass budget. Have fun. Yeah. And so there's it, just no... There's nothing to be gained by wanting a shitty movie. But right. if something is not to my standards or not to what I appreciate about a movie or something rubs me there, whatever, I'm just going to say it. You yeah, know, if Halloween you're a 20... fan of a major franchise, you know, whether whether or not you like the Halloween franchise, you're rooting for the franchise to do yeah. well because yeah. that means maybe yours yeah. that's, that's not got anything going on right now might get a green light because studios only think in terms of money so mm -hmm. like right. you gotta root for it yeah for, for me cody if you recall like one of the first lives we did was i just saw halloween kills and we did it live on my channel and and cp just so you know like when it came to halloween movies my entire life up until really kills 
all I wanted in a Michael Myers movie was in creative death scenes, mm -hmm. atmosphere, great lighting that was similar mm -hmm. to the 78 film. The story was secondary to me. I didn't care about that. Yeah. So when I went into 18, I loved it because, you know, my kids are old enough to go to the movies with me. So now it's like a generational torch mm -hmm. passing. So uh -huh. we enjoyed it. We love 2018. Kills, me and my daughter, we had our Michael Myers shirts. We went. I enjoyed watching it with her. But again, story-wise, I left the theater and went to Twitter. I'm like, what the hell? What did they see? I mean, it's just kills. It's a Halloween movie. What are you expecting? Like a, mm -hmm. like a Coen Brothers script? What are you expecting? So I was like, what's all this criticism <laughs> coming from? I get the that that one hospital scene lingered a little too. It wore out its welcome is what it did. But people were just shitting on it. I'm like, whoa. And then I started talking to Cody about it. So again, for me, mm -hmm. since day one as a kid, all I wanted was cool scenes, cool deaths, and the mask to look great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and a cool soundtrack that's it but the story was secondary that's why i can sit through the paul rudd ones was when he was possessed by sam hain or i didn't pronounce it right i'm sorry but you know Sawin. <laughs> Sawin, you know those whole storylines that went kind of left field so i can sit through them because it's it's michael myers but that's mm -hmm. what i look for so it's weird hearing the conversation now that people want something different but i think the franchise in my mind is creatively bankrupt because if mm -hmm. we took if we take the source material, we have a kid for whatever reason, still unexplained, right? Kills his sister. Now he's just this unstoppable force of evil. Why we don't know, but he's only targeting random people or his sister, depending on the timeline you're going with. So, what else can you do with that? Mm -hmm. Seriously, where else can you go? They've tried in the the late '80s and '90s, and you know, to us, eh, it was okay. They went a little bit too far left. But what honestly can they do? Once this mm -hmm. is done, where where can they go? Because I have no ideas. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you. That's one of the reasons why I have the the very unpopular opinion that I really like Rob Zombie's second film because it's very different. It's very. I'm gonna unique. watch that again. You know what? I hadn't seen it since it came out, so I'm gonna watch, watch the that again. theatrical version. Okay. I like White the, Horse. The director's cut is the one where Michael talks at the end, and it just leaves you with this giant "what the <laughs> fuck" tone, and you're like, "Never mind, okay. Cody's an idiot." Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, that, that it, it, it's the same thing. Uh, it's much easier for me in franchises that I don't have this deep seated love for to appreciate these different takes, because just like in Friday the 13th, when I'm watching those movies and I get the Jason goes to hell, I'm yeah. like, well, that's different. This is kind of fun. Has no mm -hmm. business calling itself Friday the 13th, but I enjoy it. Whereas if I was a diehard Jason fan, I understand a thousand percent why people yeah. hate that fucking movie. It's the same reason why when people talk to me about Freddy's dead. And they're like, why do you hate it so much? It's just a goofy, fun time. Like, Freddy was already joking, and I'm like, I fucking despise it. Everything <laughs> about it, I hate it's it. Because what movie. I love about Freddy and what I love about Nightmare, that movie takes a giant shit on it. And so it, it's just perspectives, nostalgia, and exactly what you said as far as expectations. Mm -hmm. Because where you walk in as a fan and you're like, as long as they get these things right, I'm good. Those are my yeah. only criteria. A lot of us walk in with different criteria. I walk into it, and even though those things are very important, awesome kills, the masks got to look good for how many times they fucked that up in this franchise amazingly. I walk in and I'm like, well, I already have how many movies where we've had cool kills and a good Myers and this and that. I want something different now. And so when I get kind of wash, rinse, repeat Myers, where it's like, well, he was killing a lot of motherfuckers in a lot of painful ways, and his mask looks good, and you like those light bulbs? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's 2022. We can't, nothing new, nothing, guys. And so it's just different. It's different expectations. And that's where I think a lot of fandom gets divided would... because we all walk in with different expectations. Right. We all walk in wanting different things. Even just a little uh, um, tangent, I just reviewed the, the Resident Evil Netflix series a couple of weeks ago. Fans, <clears throat> for the most part, are destroying it and not giving it a chance or they're giving it a chance saying it's horrible it's the worst like people are saying we need to apologize to paul ws anderson and <laughs> i look at that yeah i look at that and i'm like well i wonder what expectations they walked in with because i walked in knowing it wasn't going to be a good adaptation of the game story but as long as they get you know as long as it's pretty creative as long as there's a decent story some good characters i can enjoy it and for the most part i did didn't love it but then you have all these other fans that are like, if it's not a perfect adaptation of the video games and the characters look a thousand percent like they were in the video games and this doesn't happen, fuck this thing. And so it's it, it's crazy how we all see the same exact thing and walk away with completely different takeaways. Uh, really quick. 
since this is a universal film, will this have a Peacock same day release or you think they want to try and get as much box office money as possible? I would assume they're not going to do that this time. Um, back when Kills came out, we still we weren't in the age where Top Gun Maverick yeah. makes a billion plus dollars. So you get 17 days. You'll, you'll get it. You'll get it on Peacock right after Halloween. Yeah, so I, I don't expect them to do that, but uh, at the same time, I don't know because those deals are all made before the movie even comes yeah. out, I believe. So they might have already signed on the fucking dotted line, not knowing when COVID was going to end and fuck themselves. So who knows? Well, Halloween Universal fans... signed that deal 17 days. They, they yeah. have they have the sweetest deal as far as uh, mm -hmm. from theatrical to to home release. So 17 days is what you're waiting. Even, I like that even chat if... right there. Mm-hmm. Halloween fans are Star Wars fans of horror. <laughs> uh, was there no any other? Yes, there was. Well, Michael will end up... <laughs> a bunch of big time characters in Star Wars. Michael will end up talking at the end. That's why we'll hate it. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. There's something I... poetic about the way they set up where he has to talk and they're trying to get him to talk and kills and fuck. I don't know. There, there's <laughs> that could derail the movie for a lot of people. They're like, oh, they say you did it. And Michael's just like, Rosebud. And we're like, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> My favorite Halloween is 1978. But when I also say I love Rob's Halloween movies, the true fans act like, you fake fan? They can be mm -hmm. bonkers. I've said yeah. it before. I'll say it again. I said it on Twitter last night. Anybody that uses the term true fan to describe themselves, you're not a true fan. You're just up your own ass. There's no yeah, such yeah. thing as You're a an idiot. Yeah. true <laughs> fan of anything. You can't measure fandom. Even if you have loved Michael Myers since 1978 and my son has loved him since 2007, he could still be as much of a fan as you. And it's just people get up their own ass about that. You're that's just, just a funny. Infatuated. That's a creative way of saying my opinion is the correct one and everybody should bow down to it. Mm. I Horrific. want I want October to come around and to be able to say, "Wow, you know what? I thought X was going to be my favorite horror movie of 2022, but mm. Halloween ends really, really took it for me." Dude, as much if as I, I love that, X, and as much as I love the Black Phone, if I haven't we could seen get... that yet. You'd like it. Oh, it's great. You'll love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we get Halloween ends and I walk out saying what you just said, that is a fucking awesome Halloween movie. Mm -hmm. And yes, I, that would be awesome. That would be awesome surprise. Uh, would be a retcon if Halloween kills switch between 78 and modern day throughout upping the kills and the flashbacks and making people's fear understandable. And I love those flashbacks would have improved the film for me. Okay. Hmm. I like what they did with the flashback. I don't think... Um, I, I don't think that they need to up the body count in 78. I just think they needed to tone down the town's response in 2000 uh, and 20. You know what I mean? Like everybody was just like the whole town couldn't get past it. And I'm just like, you know, you, you look at today's world and it's just like, would three random murders in a town like really consume? And, uh, anyway, we've talked about this. Well, but like this, this, <laughs> the, the, this is where like the, 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 the leapfrogging comes into play. All right, so the the town went fucking bonkers, mm -hmm. and now suddenly it's four years later. What did the town? How did the, the town just disperse and say, "Ah, forget it." <laughs> Sorry yeah, about that, mind. Danny DeVito. <laughs> Going back home. <laughs> I I still just crack up at the whole thing about you know Lori's decided to finally give up all this bullshit and write a memoir. <laughs> it's like your fucking daughter just got like psychoed in the shower like that's <laughs> you would think if anything else that would put her on a bloodlust like oh, the fucking kill this motherfucker like something like that maybe but it's she's just like for her maybe we've lost so much it's time to give this up like i just maybe? I, I can't buy that maybe yeah, they'll make me buy it in the books movie now yeah Gotta get maybe, that book out there maybe they'll make i hope me it's not titled it the, the devil's eyes then i'm gonna laugh in the theater <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna laugh yeah. man she'll call it the shape i still don't understand why she called him the shape in halloween 2018 that was always just a thing in the credits but nonetheless yeah um, he transcends but, yes he transcends <laughs> the evil bitch it wasn't even about you <laughs> i love that <laughs> it's never been about you <laughs> if friday the 13th went the halloween route with a requel which movie do you think they should uh continue Six. from i love three hmm 
very bold choice, sir, and I enjoy that. Um, mm-hmm. If Friday the 13th went the Halloween route, I mean, 6 is a really good place. It, it's a stylistic place to get, to, to pick up mm-hmm. from because you got a lot of different tones and you can go from there. Um, I'm going to say 4. I'm, I'm going to say 4. I'm not opposed to that. Um, I personally hate the idea of the time jump. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. And, and so, so clearly, originally their thoughts, it was going to be the same night. So I, I guarantee their original plan was Judy Greer gets butchered. And now the third movie, she's, you know, Lori's gotten out of the hospital. She's got her little fucking adrenaline shot or whatever. And it's just going to be balls to the wall. One of us is dying tonight, motherfucker. Like I, that was the story. It had to have been. I can't imagine it was anything else. And so at some point after sitting on it during the whole COVID thing, um, uh, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll change it if she doesn't, though, CP. Uh, but yeah. you have, um, you've got four years later, they're going to do a time jump. They want to show how this event has affected Lori over a long period of time, or uh, she does. She has a wrench. Okay. So um, uh, they want to show the effects on the town if michael disappears and for whatever reason he had to say something about covid and that just made everybody cringe nobody looked at that and said well, that's interesting everybody went oh no and so I, I don't know i'm fascinated to find out what in this story was this big light bulb for jason blum and david gordon green for them to go oh we got to change like you know two movies into this plan we got to fucking take a left turn because this is so much better than doing them all on the same night like we've already visually and stylistically set up from the beginning mm. um no matter how you feel about kills mm-hmm. 18 and kills play together really well yeah really yeah. well they do yeah. and sometimes you know when you it's just like a, a tv season it's that's why it's very hard when i do these tv season reviews to do them episode by episode because sometimes you're talking about issues you have in episode four Mm -hmm. and then episode six solves that problem yeah and so you have that whole thing going on here where this is very much modeled to be three movies in one um and so you could watch ends and that could fix issues that you have in kills and in 2018 i mean like one of my issues in 2018 was some of the random shit that they were spending time on like the fucking boyfriend throwing the phone into the the pudding and everything like that and i'm like why the fuck why are we spending time on this dumb shit and then you get into the second film and then it makes a little bit more sense because now he's got a reason to be sorry and now he's going to be involved with the story and oh isn't it bad that he got fucked up in that third act like there's things that come later that make certain decisions make sense um and so just i'm hoping whatever they're deciding to do with this movie that they've made this gigantic change and and shifted is going to be worth it because it would be a damn shame for everybody to or most people to watch this movie and you know we're going to get details of what the original script was just like with halloween kills Mm -hmm. you know we're going to get deep this is what was going to happen everybody go that was fucking better what the (laughs) hell like because pretty much everybody even the ones that liked kills all heard about the alternative ending the extended ending and i think unanimously i saw everybody was like why the fuck would you cut that that was awesome like so i'll get these super chats real quick and then i'll pass it over to you guys if you swap the character status Writing the memoir in 18 and Sarah Connor and ends after Karen. Do you think that would have been a better idea? Um, possibly. Again, it's easy to be the, you know, in hindsight. But yeah, I, I never really bought how psycho she was about this whole thing in 18. <laughs> I love that comment. Townspeople and kills has the mob mentality like the townspeople of Springfield and the Simpsons. They can switch it on and off. Oh, like a light that's ball. awesome. Oh, yeah. That's why I use that on that, my little meme review where they're like, evil dies tonight. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, uh, what else was I going to talk about? So somebody saved me here. I got bells going off. Hmm. Uh, uh, Somebody talk. uh, (laughs) So, yeah, I will say this. I think because of what the rumors and the stories we're hearing of what kills was supposed to be, I am anticipating when ends finally shows up, we're going to be disappointed as fuck. (laughs) <laughs> and we're going to get a campaign, a hashtag campaign, similar to release the Snyder Cut. We're going to yeah. re- <laughs> release the 2021 <laughs> cut. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're going to want. I bet you that's going to happen. And we're going to get that. You're going to see that. I'm calling it now. You just wait and see. 
Everybody get the bots ready. We want the original. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no bot man. Yeah. No... <laughs> I saw a great tweet where a guy, he, he posted a, a screenshot of him buying the VOD copy. And he mm -hmm. goes, I just bought my yeah. copy of <laughs> uh, anybody that's on the outside of that joke. I apologize. Uh, Dylan Myers can take out an entire fire crew lifting one over his head. Yet now he can't push a 60 year old woman's hand down that I drain. Know, right? So tired of JLC. Yeah, I, I was not going to harp on that when I watched my trailer reaction because um, I didn't want to do anything that could ever be construed as nitpicking right off the bat because I already knew where that conversation was going to go. But I thought the <laughs> same exact thing. I'm like, OK, um, you just made this guy the baddest motherfucker on planet Earth in the last five minutes of the last film. She's yeah. not going to be a physical match for him. Like he never actually got his hands on her in 2018. That's why she did so good. She just fucking did. Guy she shot him. Field. Yeah, he wrecked the whole fucking town, and then she's just like, "Get your hand in there," and she's like, <laughs> "No!" Like, mm. he's just dragging dudes through walls and. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> Stop, seriously. <laughs> Lori being strong and smart doesn't mean that every man has to be dumb in these movies. The movie needs a Paul Red Loomis type. Uh, Doyle did nothing. Uh, see, but I don't. Everybody what in Kills this? is fucking stupid, female and male. You have the wife in the car that has the fucking hand cannon. And she gets out of the car. She has every opportunity to, to, to take Myers out to save her husband. What does she do? She runs away 20 feet away until the husband gets butchered and then comes back and shoots herself in the fucking face. Like, it's not that men are portrayed as stupid. It's the entire fucking town was made to be stupid. And they had yeah. to do that to make Myers look like this unstoppable force. That was part of the writing issue that I had with Kills. Was it just the stakes were affected because you had to make Myers so supernaturally powerful and make the townsfolk so fucking idiotic to make a lot of that shit work and I think it that was takes the kid in the skeleton mask was getting killed during that and that's what drew her out mm. Um, mm. which was cut obviously um damn it that would have been cool oh now i want to yeah. see it and okay hmm. yeah i'm telling you it, 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 it was just so much night better. and day night and day yeah ma'am what if Halloween was an episode series? Uh, I don't think I don't know what go story you tell. Um, yeah. What would you tell? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got to invent a lot of crazy shit to make that work in the Child's Play franchise. So they would have their work cut out for them in, in Halloween. Mm -hmm. uh, should Halloween get like a trilogy reboot after ends, completely separate from all of the other Halloween movies, no protagonist and all, or just leave it? Well, they're not going to leave it. There's no fucking way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no fucking way. It doesn't matter if it, integrity be damned. It's about the money. So, I mean, they even lead that off with the, the plot description I just said, where they have a whole paragraph talking about how successful 2018 was. That's the reason why you got kills and ends. Um, and so they're not going to leave it. But I can't really tell you what idea they could go with or should go with until I see ends. Because if Lori doesn't die, then people are going to say, bring her back, do another one. If Michael doesn't die, continue this and have it be about this character that didn't die at the end of ends. If they both die, then everybody's going to be like, so where do we delete the franchise to now? Do we want to do a sequel to four and bring Daniel Harris back as a a 40-year-old? Like, like, how are we going to do that? Like, Yeah. See, the yeah. thing about the I mean, Halloween franchise back when Jamie Lee left, you had Loomis. Loomis was like the, the parallel. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. I just had a pretty to close name, too. Yeah. <laughs> That was good. Uh, <laughs> but you, 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 in the franchise, so through six, uh, you know, you had Michael's counterpart was Loomis, not Jamie Lee. So it was. It, it, that's what's you know, missing. Yeah, that's a good call. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you could have something. It doesn't have to be Jamie Lee Curtis. It, you know, just if you just introduce people and fucking flesh them out flesh them out for fuck's sake mm -hmm. so if they if, if, let's say they did that they took the mike the essence of myers and 
you know, imprinted him on somebody else, right, to carry on the storyline. Or his spirit's out there, right? And the words are going to go, and they reboot a new franchise. Are we all going to be okay as fans it not being in Haddonfield or it not being on Halloween and Michael Myers being a female or, you know, things like that? You know, all the directions they can take. Are we going to be okay if they totally go a different direction? Or are we going to want the same thing? I am perfectly okay with a new setting because they did that in H2O, and I was fine with it. Um, them making it anybody but Michael Myers, absolutely not. Um, yeah. There's just no way. I mean, you're gonna have what, what my, Halloween eight, the Revenge of Corey Cunningham. It's just it doesn't <laughs> it, just, it doesn't work. <laughs> so I mean, my, Myers is the reason why people go see these movies. As much as everybody loves to say how much they love Jamie Lee Curtis, Michael Myers is the one that sells the tickets. Mm-hmm. And so if they're ever going to continue this, if they're going to do anything with that evil, I mean, if they decide to do something crazy like that, that's kind of like Halloween four to where Michael dies in this movie, but his essence gets passed on to somebody else. Fine. But then that needs to be the end of this timeline because that's where they fucked up with four is they made five because <laughs> four was like, Oh, that's a fucked up ending. And then you get mm, five and it's like, was. Oh, that's stupid. And so it, um, if they're going to go bold like that, that's fine if they do it well, but I don't want to see two, three more movies continue after that because that's that's a statement to end on, not a statement to pause on. And so, um, yeah, that that's just my opinion. CP, would you watch a Halloween movie that either is not in Haddonfield or is not Michael Myers? I don't think it needs to be in Haddonfield. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I like Halloween 3. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I love it, yeah. Uh, uh, it, 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 does, does Myers need to be in it? No. Um, but do a good job. Do a good job. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. If it's a great story, I'll take yeah, it because I love... Yeah. I mean, the, the Halloween 3 is my second favorite in the franchise. Uh-huh. But Ditto. I don't think they would ever do that again. If they ever did is when they got like... They went Super Blumhouse and you had one year as Michael Myers sequel and one year as Halloween anthology story. And mm-hmm. they just did that for, you know, eight years, like Saw. Uh, a couple of super chats. Let me see. Let me scroll back up. Hey, guys. Hope all is well. Michael and Jason are my favorites, but the only horror character that gave me nightmares was Chucky. Hope ends is good. Have a good day, y'all. All right. Surprised a Loomis relative was never written in. Hmm. Well, that's that's where a lot of people got soured on Sartain because Sartain felt like he was going to be the new Loomis. They even say it in the fucking movie. Here's a new Loomis. And then they tried mm-hmm. to do this plot twist thing that everybody hated. So um, most people hated. I'm sorry. I don't want to say everybody. Hmm. But uh, yeah, that, that was they, they had an opportunity to bring that in because, yeah, you really do. You really do miss a Loomis character in this trilogy. Um, there's a reason why the franchise went on and Loomis was kind of the the main um, through line for the first six films, save mm-hmm. for three, because he's he's got such a presence and his the way that he talks and everything has such this like symbolic relationship yeah. with Michael. And yeah, we're, we're missing something like that. Yeah, there's poetry to the way yes. he's speaking about him. And then and then Rob's I knew hell would not have him. <laughs> <laughs> It it's was all a dream. Made him a superstar, and now yeah. <laughs> this is new Loomis. That's <laughs> old Loomis. That's the one. One of the few elements of that movie that I can't defend. Uh, it was all a dream in Laurie's insane asylum, locked mind, or Michael kills her and vanishes in the Halloween night. Do not do the it's all a dream thing. I think we're past the point of that even being taken seriously anymore. <laughs> uh, let me ask you guys a question. You read that chat, and then I'll ask a question. Once Halloween ends comes out, everybody will say it's just okay, and we can all move to hopefully a new Nightmare or Friday the 13th movie, tired of this mediocre Halloween trilogy. Um, as long as it's good, I will happily not be tired of it anymore. But yes, I've been, um, I've been frustrated that Halloween has opened the doors for all of these slasher resurgences. Mm-hmm. We've got Candyman. We got Child's Play, both in a remake and in the TV series. We've got fucking Scream back and, and flowing now. And Freddie and Jason are just sitting there like... Yeah. Like, it, it that, frustrates that, me. That Jason deal is fucking stupid. It's caught mm-hmm. up in court right now or something? Like, yeah. No, yeah. the rights... Uh, the writer has the rights to Jason Voorhees. He can he can release some film in the U.S. 
You can't call it Friday the 13th. He has the characters of Pamela and Jason Voorhees. So he could re release a movie called Voorhees. Crystal Lake. Yeah, <laughs> fucking the horror Crystal Lake. But uh, Sean Cunningham internationally has the rights to the Friday the 13th title. Oh, it's a mess, I bet. Uh, yeah, okay. So, whatever the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say, Rudy, before we did the Super Chat? Yeah, I wanted to ask, what do you think? Because look at us, um, we're fans, we love the franchise, but I there's a sense of fatigue uh, mm. with us and that, with the uh, the film crowd of, like, you see you see it with Star Wars, you see it with mm. other fan bases, like, we've seen this before, even with Phase 4 with the... Uh, the crap MCU and all that, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, we were tired of this. We want something different. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Do you think because we've already milked that, those teats to exhaustion or is it, there's just so much variety now with streaming shows. There's so many things we can watch. Like the boys is totally innovative and I love it, how it takes chances and you're used to that type of thrill. What do you think it is fatigue or just, there's so much variety now that, you know, we're now as audiences wanting more than what's worked before. I think it's a bit of both. Um, I, I think that it's very easy to look at a, a $200 million Thor movie that's in theaters and go, you know, I'm not going to watch that. I'm going to go watch the boys. It, it's so easy to do that nowadays. Back yeah. when, you know, you know, 20 years ago, you'd say that people would be like, are you a fucking idiot? You're, you're not going to go see the new big badass blockbuster movie. You're going to sit at home and watch X files. Like it, it isn't, it's not the same anymore. You know, we have such huge levels of, of production and content nowadays on streaming services, on TV series. I mean, you got like Better Call Saul, the level of writing and shows like that. You got the boys that is just like so out there. You can't help but be entertained. You got um, you know, there's so much available to watch nowadays. And, and, and let's not I'm, I'm not saying this to blow ourselves up, but like, let's not discount YouTube either. Like YouTube and that form of entertainment is a lot of what I consume. I'll sit at home and I'll watch cooking channels and stuff like that for three hours before I'll go to a theater sometimes. So there's True. just, there's so many different avenues available to be entertained nowadays that people are getting a lot more selective. And it's also compounded with the fact that you know, we we have all lived in this era where as long as we've been alive, there's been movies and huge, you know, cultural shifts and, in, in, you know, the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. And then now and we're in the, the superhero rules all era as far as box office and everything to where I think we are starting to demand a little bit more because we value our time a little bit more. You know, back yeah. in the day, you would you would have no problem going to see a movie that you kind of thought was probably going to suck. But whatever, I'm going to get out of the house for a little while. And people aren't as quick to do that anymore because of exactly what you said. You can just look online and go, oh, well, there's six other TV series and 17 other movies that have been released in the past two weeks. I can just watch one of those that I'm actually interested in versus this movie where, yeah, I like the MCU, but that trailer kind of sucked. Like, <laughs> So it's it, it, it's a little bit of both. you know. And, and I don't think that it's wrong, going back to what we were saying earlier about you know, the way that some fans respond, I don't think that it's as long as you practice it in a healthy way, I don't think that it's toxic for fans to demand quality out of their I agree. franchises. You know, that, totally that comes agree. out of love. I'm going to be the first person that bitches if we finally get a new Nightmare on Elm Street film and they fuck it up. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be like, it's Freddy, so I'll just take it. Thank you. Just I've been waiting so long. Just give it to me. Mm -hmm. And that's the attitude that I see from a lot of people in some of these franchises, uh, Halloween being one of the main ones. that it just, it just puzzles me. Because if mm -hmm. you tell studios, it doesn't matter, just give it to me, then what motivation do they have to to take an extra couple passes on the script or to make sure that they get the right director or to look at the editing room and go, you know, that that scene really should get put back in there because the movie doesn't work now. Whereas if it's just like they don't give a fuck, they don't they don't mm -hmm. care. Myers is on the poster. Just, just send mm -hmm. it out there. Get it out there. Mm -hmm. And that's where I feel like a lot of people just has a disconnect. They feel like if you demand quality or if you demand improvement, then you're like ungrateful. And there's certainly people yeah. out there that can be that way if you just bitch about everything. Well, but social for... media plays a huge part. Thank in you. This, where they have such an instant response to decision makers, they yeah. can they can see results mm -hmm. instantly of yeah. of mm -hmm. like they can throw out a, a ten second clip and and instantly see what what the masses are saying and be like, 
all right, so they, they, they like this, they don't like that. Let's let's tweak and, and, and move forward. Mm-hmm. And it's it's dangerous. It's it, you know, it make make your movie. Yeah. Make, make your Be movie. Don't, don't, with it. There's times yeah. where that helps, like Sonic the Hedgehog, but a lot of other times, yeah, yeah it's that uh you know, you, you get the immediate best thing ever, worst thing ever response on yeah. Twitter. And then everybody in the middle is just kinda like, What the fuck happened? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like reshoots. Like every time you hear about a movie getting like two or three reshoots, it's like guys, just just just, just turn the Twitter off. Turn mm-hmm. turn Twitter yeah. off. Mm-hmm. Just make your fucking movie. Yeah. And you're you're more or less saying that social media is responsible for reshoots because of what they see out there. The vibe is that what you were just saying, CP? Something like that. Like like yeah. you know you'll hear rumors like oh this this so and so is unhappy with the script and this is going on and 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 then you know then there's just swell like oh I'm not going to see the movie if this happens yeah and then you know well, shit look at DC <laughs> that was yeah, DC that, for what five years <laughs> this yeah. movie's amazing we had a ten minute standing ovation. Oh yeah. fuck! People don't like it. Yeah. Stop! Yeah. Stop what you're doing! <laughs> God, don't get me started on that. <laughs> oh man, it's That's been hell for me as a Metal Gear Solid fan. You know, we didn't get the full game. It's been oh, hell for me as a so PT fan. Mm. We didn't get the game. Oh, I didn't get my geez. Justice League two and three. It's been hell for me, man, for the past eight mm-hmm. years. Yeah, yep. PT, that was the shit. Wasn't it? Yeah. I don't um I don't want to turn this into a whole different conversation <laughs> but that's that's one of the reasons despite the fact that there's most the vast majority of his stuff I am not a fan of. It's one of the reasons why I do respect the lack of fucks to give that Rob Zombie has because mm-hmm. you can have the internet collectively come together for a whole week and say this is the worst fucking trailer I have ever seen in my life and he's like oh well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> can nolan nolanize halloween uh, wow. i would be fascinated to see christopher nolan do a horror movie in general but i don't think mm. he's ever going to do something like a a slasher franchise hmm. yeah, your that, thoughts I mean... on the upcoming scream with two exclamations title i, I don't care look I, mm. I i said it was weird i, I was I'm, I'm sick of the the trend of this reboot or requel thing having the same title as the original film we got it with halloween we got it with Candyman. we got it with scream it just it causes confusion when you have three different films that are all called halloween like the diehard fans easily know the difference we say halloween 2018 or we say rob zombies halloween but yeah to me just uh, it feels creatively void for marketing to just call scream five scream and then now scream six is going to be scream with the two exclamations or scream two or that might not even be end up being the title they haven't announced that yet but what the fuck yeah uh, that that just seems stupid to me unless that's going to be some really extra meta detail that they're going to delve into in that movie that specific franchise then to me that's just kind of stupid and lazy well you but you better you better pay nev campbell at least 50 million dollars she's not going to be in it right well, i don't know dude i <laughs> yeah. don't know is I'm, it first... I'm not a fan i mean after two i get just stopped like, yeah. I'm a very casual fan. For a long time, I didn't like those movies. I've warmed up to them. I think they're all pretty solid. You know, even the third one, which is yeah. easily the worst to me, I think yeah. it's totally fine. Yeah. But uh, yeah, th- that whole Nev Campbell thing's weird because yeah, they had the whole thing come out saying very vague that essentially she didn't feel like she was getting what she deserved. Yeah, and that can be taken so many different ways. Mm-hmm. Did the studio try to lowball her, or was she high off her ass thinking that she's the franchise? And yeah, she still, you're she's never Jamie Lee and. Uh... And she's fucking she, awesome. Don't get me wrong. In some respect, I mean, she is. Yeah, yeah, she's awesome. But if they, if they're, they're very clearly with the last film trying to shepherd in this new generation of characters. That was very intentional. Mm-hmm. And I would even say, if you f- had to, you could kind of delete Nev Campbell and Courtney Cox out of Scream Five, and the movie wouldn't mm-hmm. be that different. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't a huge stretch to have a Scream film without them as it is. And then you get all the fans that are going nuts, like we d- scream is nothing without Nev Campbell. And I'm like, a lot of people said yeah. scream was nothing without Wes Craven. It still worked out pretty <laughs> fucking good. Like, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that character retiring. If you don't want to kill her off, if you want her to have that legacy as the final girl that fucked people up for five movies and yeah. lived, cool. Or she can come back in seven or whatever. But I'm not personally somebody that thinks that scream has to have Nev Campbell. Right. Now, if the studio were assholes 
and they wanted to give her five bucks to come and do her role, then yeah, they kind of deserve some social media hate. If she was high off her ass and had five minutes of screen time and wanted $10 million, then she needs to chill a little bit. But I'm mm. sure it's somewhere in the middle. Yeah. I'm sure. Also, sure. Final thoughts on screen real quick. couple mm-hmm. sentences. For me, the reason why I was never a big fan, I think one, two, and four were my favorite. After that, they're just I'm just a casual fan, but I'm not dying to see part seven or eight. But for me, and CPI, you're old enough to remember. Like, you remember when Scream 1 came out? Sure. What made it special is that it was us. Because mm-hmm. all the jokes we talked about, like, I'll be back, you know, all the jokes mm-hmm. and all the rules, we talked about that as horror fans as kids. Yeah. So when mm-hmm. we yeah. saw the movie, that's like, hey, that's us. That's what we talk about when we watch a movie. That's the yeah. kind of parties we have. So that's what made it special to me. We're watching ourselves on screen. Mm-hmm. And then once that novelty wore off and they went on and started doing the same thing over again, it wore off for me. So that's for me why I one will always be true to my heart because I'll never forget that experience in the 90s. But after yeah, that, plus it also good. made it also made that that subgenre like high profile. I remember yeah. being like, "Holy shit, this is slick looking! Like this, this is this is not Friday the Thirteenth. This, yeah, <laughs> what the covered. fuck's going on here? Yeah, yeah." I've told this story before, but my experience with the first two Scream films, uh, I was six when the first one came out, and so by the time the second one came out, I'm seven years old, and I, for the longest time, I was the only horror fan that I knew. That mm-hmm. felt like this secret forbidden world that my dad let me have access to that was like, Shh, don't tell anybody. And nobody <laughs> else was a part of that world. It was my thing. Mm-hmm. And so you had a bunch of kids my age that either didn't know horror or was scared of horror or whatever. And then by the time Scream 2 came around, I think half of my class was running around in ghost face outfits that Halloween. They're like, we're horror fans. And I was like, fuck you. No, you're not. <laughs> posers. And so I was like a little seven year old gatekeeper. And so that's why it took me a True long fan. time. Yeah. It took me a long time to warm up the screen because I was like, this fucking franchise ruined my world. And uh, so I, I didn't really warm up the screen until I was like in my early twenties uh, because I had that memory as a kid. And I just kind of decided that the franchise wasn't really, it wasn't really for me. And so it wasn't really until scream four came out. And I saw that in theaters and I was like, that was fun. And then I started to watch the old ones and I'm like, these are a lot better than I gave them credit for. They're fun. Like they're, they're never going to be my favorites of all time. They're just, it's just not. But uh, that was, that was my first experience with scream was it, it, it destroyed <laughs> my little private world. Um, this is one that CP and Rudy are going to have op- opposing views on looking forward to terrifier two way more than ends. If I remember correctly, Rudy, you're a big fan of the first one, correct? Oh Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely. Yeah, that's probably my most anticipated uh, horror movie for the rest of the year because that's coming out in October as well, right? Yes. Yeah, that's definitely what I'm looking forward to. I love the the uh, the first one. It had, I, I think I told you in one of our lives, it's the first mm-hmm. horror movie I had seen in a while that felt like it had balls, mm-hmm. like it didn't give a damn. It, it went for it. It, it reminded me of watching an '80s horror movie, mm-hmm. uh, and I absolutely loved it. And where are they going to go? I hear they're going to explain the origin uh, of the clown. I forgot his name. Was it Frank? Art? Arts. There you go. I mean, I'm, whatever they do, they they have my trust. Seriously, they've done no no wrong in my eyes, and I'm looking forward to it. So yes, that's probably my most. That is my most anticipated horror movie. More than uh, I can't remember exactly the runtime, but I think I read that the movie's like two and a half hours long, or something like that. Fuck you, that's exhausting. Yeah, well, it, okay. it's something like that. So they're they're really not giving a fuck with this one. Um, I, I'm very much in the middle on this one, so I'm going to pass it to CP. CP, Terror. <laughs> <laughs> CP and well Brian said. Lomax. CP and Brian <laughs> Lomax are very much not fans of Terrifier. May I ask um, why? I don't think I've ever heard your thoughts. Uh, man, it's been a while. I, I just remember, like, it, 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 you know, if it's this this you know non realistic universe, that's one thing. Mm-hmm. But the whole pizza parlor scene, like, really, <laughs> really fucking made me angry because wow it, it like just just the, the whole way everything was going and and like I, I, I don't remember exactly how it went but like the dude who owned the pizza place should have been should have been involved a little bit and it, like i need to rewatch it i guess but I just mm-hmm. remember you had thinking, this creepy ass clown that comes in and sits down across from these young girls and he's just staring at them for yeah. a really long yeah. time and the guy doesn't do anything. And then eventually he's the the, the 
budget version of the head jack o' lantern from Halloween 2018. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. can understand that. Yeah. From, from I, I was very much and in the middle. And then they had the bone tomahawk kill, and I was like, "Yep, saw so that." That's mm. uh... oh, that was good. Yeah, <laughs> I was in the middle on Terrifier. Uh, admittedly, the film was really overhyped. Mm. Like, I, I can't tell you how many movies were probably destroyed for me. You from, mentioned that a lot. My man. time, that in, sucks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My time in killer flicks really fucked up a lot of my my movie experiences for those couple of years there because that was a group of people where if anything was just even average. It was like, behold, the greatest fucking thing that's ever been really. Yeah. And that's what Terrifier was. It was this movie that nobody hardly had heard of. A couple of people in this group saw it, hyped it up. Somebody else did a review on it, and it, it went batshit crazy for different reasons. And so I, I finally watched the movie. How many reviews? <laughs> <laughs> I watched the movie. And while I think art is definitely a, a cool looking villain. I think yeah. that he's creepy and he's got a screen presence. Oh, yeah. Um, the movie was definitely fucking brutal. Like just yes. in the kills, him wearing the chick's skin. Like it did go for it. I found nothing to be desired in that movie as far as the story, as far as the characters. Yeah. Uh, which again goes back to expectations because some people watch that and they're like, dude, he that was some fucking awesome kills and art's a badass. That's all I need. Give me more. And I'm just at the point where I just need more from a slasher. I just feel like there, there's cool. There, there's yeah. a lot to be the cool or a lot to be said about having cool throwback to the 80s when it was just about the blood, the gore, the tits. It feels it, 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 it feels like sorry. Uh, mm. It feels like there's a lot of horror fans that mm. just want something to cosplay as. And and art is is yeah, fucking he's fucking badass looking. I mean, mm. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. But like, as long as the dude looks cool and there's cool kills, I, I, that I'm set. That yeah. that that appears to be like a third of ho horror fans. Shit, that, I would say even more than that. I mean, look yeah. how many fan films that we've got that people oh. swear are the greatest thing ever, just because the it kind of looks like Jason and there was mm. some blood. Mm. And, and so <laughs> that, that that's where I was with the film. I watched it twice, and I was like. Okay, like I'm into it. I'll watch a second film. I'm not going to scream from the rooftops. And it also kind of frustrates me too um, with how the hyperbole of the internet. I mean, people were ready to give Art the Clown the crown for new horror icon in one movie. Yeah. And it's like, no, hmm. sorry. Um, I mean, I mean, the collector to me is the closest we have to that, but that's a different, mm -hmm. kind of a different conversation. I love part uh, two of the collector. Yeah. I Yo, love where's them. trick or treat to fuck all that? I'm telling you, yeah, for, for for real. But yeah, so this this new film, I don't know. Uh, I've been turned off a little bit with um, some of the things that I've seen online, mostly from the guy that plays Art, where I, it, it, he comes across like he thinks he's God's gift to horror. Uh, and again, I don't know the guy. That's because a lot of people, you know. Blowing up his ass, I know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so maybe he's not, but I, I've just seen like where he was bashing Scream, saying that they were ripping off terrifier two because of the flamethrower scene that was literally just a, a thing on the laptop for five seconds in the whole movie and um <laughs> yeah, I, I think when they released the scene the the deleted scene of the joker for the batman he was like hey call me to play the client and it was like come on dude like fucking yeah. calm down <laughs> and so there, there's there's a few things about the movie that's turned me off a little bit the two and a half hour runtime that seems extremely self-indulgent for a, a, a admittedly by design cheap slasher film yeah um but i am curious it's going to be a packed september and october between jeepers creepers <laughs> terrifier halloween um i'm sure there's one or two others i'm forgetting too um but i i land on ends being a little bit more anticipated than terrifier too oh sure so, what a world we would live in if terrifier 2 ends up being our favorite of the year <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Hey, fuck X. That's not too Give far from the truth. Maybe. 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 I want a new icon. Hasn't been one since Ghostface. And that ties well, into that... exactly what I just said, where people are so, they're, they're so starved for a horror icon that as mm -hmm. soon as one is kind of cool, they're like, here, take it. Mm -hmm. oh, but I'm with you. I'm with you. There was just something about that, that, that uniqueness and creativity in the 70s and 80s that gave us so many of these icons that we have not had since the 90s. I mean, like I said, I think the collector to me is the closest to that argument, but I still wouldn't even really 
be ready to give him the crown yet because some people don't even know who the fuck the collector is. That but, see, that's why I give X like a, an, another star or two because mm -hmm. it's 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 an Pearl can slash. Pearl can be an icon. Yeah, I mean, we'll yeah, see how yeah, Pearl yeah. works out, but Pearl <laughs> could be an icon right there. I mean, that's coming shit. out later this year, right? Yeah. Pearl? Okay. Next yeah. year. Next year, got it. Yeah. I mean, shit. Right. Um, I would say, and again, it's hard with one movie, and I don't think this is the type of movie that needs a sequel. Uh, no. But I, I would even say that um, the the black phone that the grabber has icon potential, but uh, it, it's so hard nowadays to tap into what makes a killer, what makes a, an antagonist iconic like that, to where mm -hmm. now they're the ones selling the tickets. And they're the ones you go for. Like we're supposed to root against Freddy, but let's be honest, we go to the movie to watch Freddy win. Yeah. <laughs> like it's just yeah. it's weird. <laughs> but we saw the Michael Evil Presence idea in Halloween Four with Jamie at the end. For me, it's a great idea to do. You all like it's a great idea. Fuck, hang on. We saw the Michael Evil Presence idea in Halloween Four with Jamie at the end. For me, it's a great idea. Do you all like the Christine idea? I gotta see it in execution. On paper, it worries me. Uh, I've said this to a couple of people that I've been messaging since last night. It's such a unique and bold idea to throw in there in the last movie. I think it's going to be one of those things where it's either going to be really successful for some people or it's going to tank the movie for others. Yeah, I think this is going to be I think the divisiveness is, of kills is going to pale in comparison to this film. Uh, if I was to make a bold prediction, I think when ends comes out, it's going to be one of those movies where some people are going to love it and swear it's the best of the trilogy because it was unique and did different things. Master and then you're going to have other people that are going to say worst of the trilogy were, you know, we need to apologize to Rob zombie, like stuff like that. Um, <laughs> and, and so that's what I'm assuming, uh, especially if we start going down the rabbit hole of copycat Michael Myers and all of that, like there's going to be a lot of people that are so passionate fans that they're going to be like, I'm ready to walk out of this fucking theater right now, like that level. I want to join a, a Reddit group where they're just kind of meh about yeah. the series. Just, just <laughs> meh. Eh. Michael Mayers. <laughs> there you go. Jeepers Creepers 4 trailer reaction. It dropped. Um, did either of you guys watch the trailer for Jeepers Creepers Reborn? I had no I'm idea they were it. making a four. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, 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 was, um, it was made independently. They got the... I don't know exactly how the rights worked because I think they were in court for a little while. Somebody was accusing them of making a movie they didn't have the legal right to, but nonetheless, Victor Salva is not involved with it. That's the biggest development, I guess. You think That's you'd good. want to stay away from court. Yeah. So, uh, when I saw the trailer, it didn't excite me. It could be cool. But this was my thoughts on it. And it's going to be difficult, but you guys hopefully can picture it with the way I describe it. So Jeepers Creepers, to me, I love the first film. It's one of my favorites of all time. I understand some people have issues with it because of the director. Totally understand that. I loved it for well over a decade before I even knew the truth about all that. And I can't change my love for the movie. Jeepers Creepers, to me, was cool and unique and worked because it was like this old school throwback, like drive-in monster movie. Really cool monster design, really cool lore, a very badass look, great characters, uh, and just a thrill ride that just unfolds throughout the movie. You watch that movie, it starts off like a slasher film. This guy in the truck's going to be chasing him, and it turns into something completely different. The right. trailer for this Jeepers Creepers 4, it essentially shows these people that are in this town, and they're talking about the creeper kind of like around the campfire, like Friday, Friday the 13th, like... Ooh. We're, it's time to talk about the creeper. He comes around every 23 years, every 23rd spring. And they're like, oh, what does he do? He eats. Like, It's set up like that. And they're in this festival in this town. And eventually the creeper shows up and chases what is going to be our main characters into this little fucked up cabin house. And it's like him trying to get into the cabin while they're in there. And the way that the trailer is shot with all the shot, it, it looks like you could have taken the creeper out and just put a guy with a mask and an axe and it'd be the same movie. And so while it looks interesting because it's different and I'm curious what a non Victor Salva is going to do with the movie, it looks too slasher to me. Jeepers Creepers was never a slasher, in my mm. opinion. 
And so as a fan of the franchise, uh, it didn't excite me. It just kind of made me go, uh, you went like the most obvious generic route you could have taken this. Um, so that's kind of my trailer reaction without showing the trailer. Mm. Um, that's that's the other franchise that, that comes out that I forgot to mention in September, October. So. Hmm. You did a wonderful uh, job, don't you agree? I mean, he painted it perfectly. I had a perfect image in my head. I'm so disappointed in my head. <laughs> Hopes for the second season of Chucky. Did you watch season one, Rudy? No, I haven't. No. Are you a fan of Child's Play? I don't even know if we've talked about it. Uh, I think he's the coolest villain out there. I love his uh, his his mouth and what he says. Yes. That sounds so weird. I love his mouth. Yeah. Can you delete this from the live? You know, I don't want anybody to Take hear this. <laughs> I love the mouth on the guy. That didn't get any better. No, he's got. I'm putting that. He curses, man. Yeah, love his language. Yeah, his language. He's got a Um, a sailor mouth. But uh, you've highly recommended. I know you're really uh, loving season one, and I'll add it to the list quite a bit. Yeah, there there were some issues, especially the last episode. I wasn't thrilled with how they wrapped things up uh, and teased uh, the continuation. But overall, I was surprised with how much I did enjoy it. When I had very huge worries for Mm -hmm. you know don mancini led chucky on television because don mancini i never know what i'm gonna get yeah love the guy to death for keeping the franchise alive but there's times where he nails it as far as what i want from chucky and then it seems like the next time i tune in he goes crazy with the ideas and i'm like no stop and so the season was kind of a bit of both he does um, get George Lucas itis, where it's just like, whoa, 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 yes, yes, <laughs> like, slow down, no, 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 yeah, <laughs> put the pen down, put it down. Um, hopes for the second season. I hope they tone down some of the goofiness. I hope it doesn't go too batshit crazy bananas. Um, yeah, there you go, and- dice. Uh, because there was there was elements of the show that was very classic <laughs> child trademark play. that right now. <laughs> yeah, there was elements of the first season that was very classic child's play, but then there was other elements that was very campy and goofy, mostly surrounding Jennifer Tilly um, yeah. and some of the things that they did there. Yeah. And so I hope they don't double down on that in season two. I hope they at least keep the balance that they had, or possibly tone that down a little bit. Um, but I'm very worried about what they're going to do to include the kids from the first season, because to me, it doesn't make any narrative sense why they would continue to be part of the story, but they've already kind of announced that they are. So I don't, uh, it's going to be, hopefully they write it in a way where it makes sense why these junior high kids are now, you know, trotting around the USA trying to stop Chucky when they have school and things like that. So (laughs) <laughs> um, CP, what are your hopes for the second season? I, I, I mean, I'm there. I'm there day one. I, okay. I need, I need footage. I, 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 I mean, it, it's such, such a bizarre ending mm-hmm. to the to the season where, and, and I mean, everybody and their mother just keeps saying, "Glenn, Glenda, Glenn, Glenda." It's oh, like, it's already been confirmed. It's yeah, it's well, definitely well, happening. It's been right, cast well, and everything. Yeah. All right, so so that's that's one character. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what are you gonna do with the other ten episodes and, and mm-hmm. fifty nine minutes each? Uh, I I I I need to know where it's going because because like we we've, we've said, uh, Mancini has has a way about him where you know. Also, very much like Rob is, Zombie, where he yes. likes his ideas and mm-hmm. you either go along with it or. Sorry, Charlie. He's not mm-hmm. necessarily rude about it. He's not thinking, you know, well, fuck all of you. It doesn't matter. Like, but he's yeah. very quiet confidence. You know, this mm-hmm. is cool. This is interesting. This is fun to me. Everybody involved with the show loves the guy to death. So they're going to go along with whatever he wants to do. Um, and just for me personally, he's he's a bit hit or miss yeah. with, with with what I want. You That's know? exactly the way I'd put it. Hit or miss. Mm-hmm. And if I can just stop you right there, Cody. I admire the fuck out of that with Rob Zombie that he does whatever he wants with mm-hmm. who he wants mm-hmm. and he could care less yep. what the world of the internet says. I Jesus envy that. Wife. I want to be that one day. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm getting there, but that's so damn powerful. Yeah. No, I, you know? I, I, I don't necessarily think that it's the healthiest thing in the world if you want to really succeed, <laughs> but I don't even think he really cares about that. I think he's, he's succeeded with his music. He's yeah. already he's got a lifestyle. Yeah. That's fine. And so now you have the movies and you're just like, I'm just going to fucking have fun. I'm going to make the shit that I want to make. And so, yeah, I respect that. You know, for me, selfishly, I wish he would 
take a little criticism here and there. Mm-hmm. But uh, I do envy the fact that he genuinely does not care. Like, I, I, I even made a joke whenever it was announced on Twitter, like, Rob Zombie set to direct the Monsters for 2022. And I retweeted it and I put, breaking news, Sherry Moon Zombie cast as Lily Munster. <laughs> and I love the fact that, you know, almost universally, everybody's like, she's a terrible actress. But he's just like, don't give a fuck. Guess what? Yeah. Lead role, wife, every movie. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's I'm with awesome. You. I'm with yeah. you. I respect it for sure. Mm-hmm. We need a new garage, so yeah. <laughs> the wife is <laughs> getting a roll. Uh, thoughts on Jeepers Creepers trailer? I just answered that, so hopefully you caught it. Uh, if not, just dial it back. Not even five minutes. Talk to someone in the know about Halloween ends. They said the movie was going to be different and extremely divisive, and some fans would be pissed. Very interested in what that will be. And you know, um, there's something about that statement that really intrigues me. I was talking to my buddy Joey Sasso yesterday because he's a big Halloween fan, and he said something that was uh, um, exactly my thoughts. And he says, "I wish more movies would be like that, to where it comes out and it's like not everybody is going to love this because mm-hmm. some of the my most favorite movies of all time are one of those things where it's like it's not for everybody. You know, you have the MCU for better or worse that says, "You guys like this? Here's 10 more years of this <laughs> with no changes." And then you've got oh, DC that's kind of like fuck your feelings. Some people are going to love this, some people are going to hate it. The Batman, perfect example. Some people are me and Rudy, masterpiece. And then you Love get, it. you know, CP, eh, it was pretty good. And then you get other people, I hated it. And so I, I like, you know, when I'm on the receiving end of the good side, obviously, it sucks to not like it. But I like when I walk into a movie going, this is either going to be something I love or hate versus walking into something where I'm like, this is going to be very safe. I'm going to have a good three out of five experience along with the other 200 people in this room. And I'm not going to remember this movie in four days. I try so, my damnedest to not not put anything into the movie before i watch it and it yeah shit like halloween makes it impossible to Mm -hmm. to not have some sort of you know uh, prerequisite but you know if you can go in with just just neutral expectations that that's the best way because Mm -hmm. you'd rather be pleasantly surprised than disappointed yeah yeah i I had to really almost like control alt delete my brain before I went into Halloween <laughs> kills because Halloween 2018, uh, my expectations really did kind of screw me with that movie. Cause we were all the whole world, the whole horror world was so excited for 2018. We're mm-hmm. hyping it up. The trailer was fucking awesome. Like, Oh my God, it's back. This is going to be the greatest thing ever. And I walked in and I was disappointed. And so I made the conscious effort with Halloween kills to walk in with as little expectation as i could you can never go in with full like zero expectations but Mm -hmm. i tried to just be as much of a blank slate as i could Mm -hmm. and i'm gonna try to do that with this one as well it's gonna be even harder because i knew exactly what i was getting into with kills we're gonna continue the last movie and a lot of fucking people are gonna die and then you get into halloween ends and there's so many of these weird details that we're getting and questions covid four years later Corey cunningham it's gonna be impossible for me to not walk in going i wonder if this is how it's going to go and maybe this. And so it's going to be hard, but yeah, that I tend to have the best experiences, especially with horror. If I'm as close to a blank slate as possible X, that was an as close to a blank slate as I could be. I didn't watch a trailer. I didn't know the plot. All I knew was a 24 slasher film. People seem to be liking it. Mm -hmm. Walked in fucking loved it. Black phone. I watched the trailer for about 30 seconds, realized that Blumhouse was going to Blumhouse this trailer and I stopped it. And so all I knew was Ethan Hawke in a creepy mask, kid stuck in a basement, ghost talking to him. Cool. I'm there. Walked in, loved the movie. Uh, when I tend to walk in feeling like I know everything, that's when a movie can disappoint me because mm. they're either going to deliver like, um, was it Blackburn? Was that the movie with the evil Superman? Oh, yeah. Blackburn. Yeah, the kid. That's Brightburn. A good ex- Brightburn. Yeah. Brightburn. Yeah. Brightburn's a good example because I watched the trailer and I'm like, okay, cool. Evil Superman kid. I'm there but the movie only delivered that. And so mm-hmm. my expectations of uh, it could be cool if he does this, he, he, he might, you know, laser through somebody's brain and he might lift somebody in the air and draw like all these scenarios that I had in my head, just subconsciously from thinking evil Superman kid, that's just exactly what the movie gave. And so even though it was cool and different, I walked out going, there was no surprise there. 
there's a comment that went up. It was Don Wick 91. I 100% agree with him. He says, uh, pre-internet was the best time to watch movies. Absolutely no expectations. I agree with that, man. Like, like, uh, yeah. like CP touched on earlier, social media has really, I think, affected our movie going experience because look at Multiverse of Madness. Uh, everybody was expecting mm-hmm. like Eric Bana Hulk, all these cameos. <laughs> and then uh, when they went and just had a movie, all the suit they people. were pissed and they hated it. And it's like expectations can definitely ruin a film for you, especially. But that's what the world we're in. You know, the, this this void of social media tweets and reactions. And you see, you see the thumbnails with the big arrow pointed to the background. Guess what you missed? Does mm-hmm. everybody vest so much time into a film well, and it's built up in our head? And we go and thinking it's going to be the greatest thing ever. And then we leave disappointed. So I totally well, agree with that. That's why I just watch teasers now. That's yeah. it. I mean, this movie is a perfect example because the, the dial it back to before Internet. And this trailer comes out. We're in a theater. All the trailer says is more Halloween shit coming, guys. <laughs> and so that's all you would have. I mean, we're going to get another trailer inevitably. But, you know, let's say that's all we got. You walk into the movie with a, a mostly a blank slate. You know that Michael Myers and um, J- Jamie Lee Curtis is going to fight. That's all the expectations that you have. Mm-hmm. But she within spends lots of times in kitchens. Yeah. In this but, trilogy. but within 30 <laughs> minutes of this trailer dropping, I had comments and tweets and everything. It was like I, th- this shot here with his fingers is that Corey thing that was rumored and confirmed on Reddit. And this, and, and it's just like people piece together the entire movie through yeah. trailers and interviews and everything else to where something high profile like this, you almost have to go off the fucking grid yeah. to be able to fully enjoy it. Um, and and it, it really does suck. I, I was talking with somebody on Twitter about that, where they were talking about the, the effect that this, you know, film Twitter world and everything has had on us. And, and, I really would like to go to a point where we could just kind of unplug and just walk right. into a movie with no expectations, mm-hmm. with no idea what the general audience has said. You don't get those fucking hyperbolic, um, hyperbolic Twitter um, early release reviews. This changed my life. I am mm-hmm. shook. Like all this shit that they just copy and paste for every fucking movie that they see to try to get mm-hmm. on the poster. Like all of that stuff is gone. Please invite me to the next one. You just walk into the theater. <laughs> exactly. You walk into the theater with a hundred other people that saw the TV spot and the poster in the hallway. And that's it. I, I miss that. I really do. I miss it. I do too. And then you don't find out until you go to work and the two other people that actually go to the theater come in and are like, did you like that? Yeah, hmm. I did. Oh, I didn't. Oh, really? And like, it's this weird surprise where nowadays we'll know before we walk out of the walk into the theater what the discourse is going to be mm. Mm. maybe the budget kills creativity compare kick-ass one to two well for the most part that's a universal rule when you don't have a lot of money to work with you're inevitably more creative because you have to make that dollar stretch Very true. what if the whole halloween trilogy is made with that flashback style <laughs> I think you're talking about the what if they made a trilogy out of that flashback sequence uh in kills I don't know if we need that. I think we're good. Yeah. yeah. I, that that sequence was cool because it was a sequence. <laughs> uh, what truth about John Carpenter director? I don't know I, what you're referencing. I don't Jeepers know if you're talking Creepers. to... Oh, what truth about Jeepers Creepers director? Just Google Victor Salva. You'll, you'll have all the facts there. Um, not a guy you? that today's society would support any movie that he ever put no. his name on. We'll just put it that way. Nope. And I'm not saying that they should. I'm not saying today's society like that's a, a backhanded comment. Just <laughs> um, let me see. Was there any? Oh, yes, there was more. Did you know that they are making an it prequel TV series called Welcome to Dairy for HBO Max with Andy Muschietti and his sister Barbara Muschietti set in 1960s? Uh, yes, of course they are. Uh... <laughs> I'll give it a chance, but I don't care because I really did not like it. Chapter two really did not like that. And so I don't know, aside from the fact that it made money, that that that's still the highest grossing horror movie of all time. Is it not? I um, hope not. Is it really I'm pretty certain uh. it made a lot of fucking money? That's why whenever mm-hmm. Halloween was coming out, I was like, it's going to make a lot more money than you than you think it's going to. And um, but yeah, it, they could do something cool with it. But it is a very finite story the magic is in seeing these kids very, you know, old school Goonies, Amblin entertainment and a horror movie, and then seeing them as adults 
They fucked up the adult side, in my opinion. And so this is just going to be an excuse for more Pennywise. Have y'all seen the uh, the it not to talk, bring it up, but the it series back in the 90s? Have you seen that recently revisited it before? Yes. Yes. It, well, um, go ahead. No, I, me and my son, we were watching. We saw it that just came out in 2018 when they, and he goes, let's go back and watch the old one. I'm like, mm -hmm. you're going to you're going to find it sucks. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened. It was the ABC showed it on Sundays because it was a made for TV, you know, movie. And it was released Sunday, so it would come on every Sunday. I remember that came out, and I'm watching Pennywise, and people were terrified. I went to school the next day, and everybody was scared of clowns. Mm -hmm. I'm like, he just looks like Bozo. I mean, did you don't grow up with Bozo? I mean, it's not it's not the thing to be scared about. But anyway, we saw the film again, and you're right. The second part of that that um, that uh, the movie, they ruin it with the adults. And if you see it again, it's cringeworthy because an adult tool mm -hmm. isn't it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was a director's call, but every male actor in that movie is either giving her a back rub rubbing her feet hugging her consoling her every scene they're touching her it's disgusting man well, and it's like that why might did be... they go that route i haven't don't, read don't they the... all have a gangbang in, in the, book? the book in the book they did yes mm. yeah and i was going to say that i haven't read the book i got about you know a quarter of the way through it stephen king's a very odd writer whenever i got to the point where mm. he was describing stan losing his virginity and i i've never forgotten this quote that's how fucking weird and perplexed oh. I was when I read it, where he's going the back and forth in the dialogue between Stan and his girlfriend that he's about to lose his virginity to. And there's a line where he's using descriptive words and he goes, his penis rose out of his bush like an exclamation point. Wow. And I was like, I'm done with this book. I'm just going to watch the Tim Curry movie. What's the uh, period? Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> exactly. So balls. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of guilty pleasure with the 1990 series. Um, I've said this ad nauseum, but like I, I grew up watching horror movies since I was like four years old, but they never scared me. The only two movies or two characters that have ever genuinely like gave me nightmares was Zelda from the 1990 mm. Pet Cemetery movie and tim curry's pennywise people see that nowadays they laugh because it, it it doesn't age well but when i was a kid that was fucking terrifying mm -hmm. um yeah, i love the first half of that mini series i think it has a lot of charm i actually it, for as great as a lot great. of the things that the 2018 thing did I, I still prefer the first half of the mini series um the second half has a lot of problems but i still can enjoy watching it for nostalgic reasons so uh, that's one of those series where I totally get every criticism that's hailed at it, but I still love it. It still made my top 50 horror films of all time when I did that video last year. So, And just because it's not scary to me doesn't mean it's not scary to everybody mm -hmm. else and the impact yeah. it's made to everybody. So I can understand that. Yeah. Yeah. And I got a lot of shit when I said that because I was comparing the two. You know, you had Bill Skarsgård that for today's horror standards is a lot more terrifying than what Tim Curry is if you watch it now. And some right. people are like, how the fuck could you think that was better? What the, this is stupid. He's just like a, mm -hmm. a smoking cancer patient with clown makeup. And I'm like, you had to be there. <laughs> you had to watch it as a kid, first of all. And you had to watch it back in the 90s when we didn't have this technology and shit. So, um, yeah. Uh, did they get my it, Bozo reference, CP? Did, yes. did everybody get I that? Know. Or am I old? Are we old? Uh, You're, uh, you you just yourself. made it with me. You just made <laughs> <Okay>. it. <laughs> yeah, cookie. Uh, Grand prize game, never mind. <laughs> it, the first part of it is the highest grossing horror movie of all time. Yes. By about 30 million over uh, six cents. Mm. And and uh, the second part is not. Is not. It chapter two made about $115 million less mm -hmm. than it chapter one. Yep. Didn't have near as good as reception. Which, you Chucky know, versus Leprechaun. Chucky. Who wins? Chucky. Fuck Leprechaun. <laughs> no don't discussion at all? We're not nope. going to talk about that? Just nope. <laughs> 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 Halloween 2018 is the only movie to ever truly make me angry. High expectations got the best of me. Kills was schlocky fun. I hope ends is great. I think we all hope ends is great. But we'll want the... Yeah, who, who goes into a movie like, you know what? I really hope to have a miserable time. Um... Uh, I need Geeks and gamers, the quartering. Uh, no, no. <laughs> there are people, people walk out into there. an MCU movie. Yeah, here I am. Yeah, they, there are people that walk into a movie that want to be proven wrong about how shitty Sadists. it is. Yeah. 
<laughs> Love your videos, Cody. Hopefully Halloween ends doesn't crash and burn like Bren, Ben Tramer. <laughs> we'll find out. Cody, love your content since 2018. Always look forward to a new upload. I want to know if you've ever seen Ginger Snaps. I have not. Uh, saw it twice this year. Love it um, more second time. P.S. Hint for 31 on 31. Uh, for which one? The one in August or the one in October? Damn. Let's see. I think we're caught up with Super Chats. All right. We'll cut it off in 10 minutes. We'll do a, an even two hours if you guys are good with that. So Sure. Let's um let's see. What other comments do we got here? Curry's Pennywise was more creepy uncle type clown. Bill Skarsgård was like an actual monster. Yeah. Bill Skarsgård definitely embraced the monster with the eyes and the shit that he was able to do. Something about Tim Curry, just the way that he could change his face was what always got to me because he was the happy clown, did that very good, and then he just has that mm. look. And that's what always got to me. Yeah, Yeah. I I remember like it was yesterday. I watched the It miniseries. And that night I had a nightmare that I was at. It was called Food Town. It was the grocery store in Toledo where I grew up. And I was in Food Town with my parents, lost my parents in the store. And then Pennywise showed up and started chasing me around Food Town. And that was uh, I woke up and I was just like, holy fuck, I had an actual nightmare about a horror movie. It was kind of this weird thing. Greatest day ever. Yeah. I was like, that was terrifying, but now I love it. Um, Go back to bed, quick, quick. Do you, yeah. <laughs> do you guys prefer dark endings or good endings when it comes to horror? It depends on the movie. Yeah. Dark. It depends on the movie. Um, I think that some stories are better with bleak endings, like The Thing. And I think mm. some movies benefit by having a little bit of hope at the end. Um I know that dark endings kills a lot of movies for um, our buddy Brian. He tends to like the the hopeful side of things, but um, <laughs> was it hereditary? Was it a little too much? I think he said, but the, but it depends on the movie. Sometimes I walk out of a movie and I'm like, that was kind of a, a, a boring ending. They should have went dark with that. Um, mm-hmm. And then at the same time, there's endings where I'm like, eh, you didn't have to well, quite Brian press the brings, fuck out of me. Brian brings Brian into his. Oh no! Of course, of course. 2018 Halloween 2018 is a perfect example before we knew that we were getting Halloween kills and Halloween ends that movie ends on a happy note we have vanquished mm-hmm. the evil and all three of us have survived and I walked mm-hmm. out of that going fuck that that was bullshit mm-hmm. one of you should have died <laughs> what's up guys Rudy this heat is no joke Cody what's up with that guy on Twitter claiming Jordan Peele is the greatest horror director sub CP and uh, that that's one of those guys that make Twitter something that I kind of wish Elon Musk would buy and then just fucking delete. Um, so I, I don't want to spend too much time on it because we're all going to roll our eyes and think the same thing. It was some guy saying that, are we ready to declare Jordan Peele the greatest horror director of all time? Nope. Because no other horror director has had three great movies, let alone three in a row. Huh? For some, somebody's response was, have you ever seen John Carpenter? And he was like, Halloween's great, but I don't think any of his other movies are good. And that's what set the internet you know, on fire, so. but you could you could name a billion of them. It's a stupid ass opinion. It's not even worth talking about. Mm-hmm. There's people on Twitter, especially people that have a following that are just attention seeking. They want the 950 <laughs> retweets. They want to have the whole fucking internet talking about them for two hours. So they say some stupid shit that makes no sense yeah. that they know is going to set everybody on fire. That's how you get guys like soups that have such a big following because he says some weird thing. This is the greatest moment in Marvel or whatever, just to send all of the fanboys crazy saying, yes, behold. And everybody that thinks that he's an idiot go, what the fuck is he talking about? And so it's all about engagement. That's all it is. It's manufactured engagement. Yeah. Making the white noise and all that. Yes. So, yes. so this guy who said that uh, Jordan Peele was the greatest, was he someone's, Child who got a hold of their parents' phone and just put shit out there, or what? Jordan Peele himself, <laughs> critic. This is the best part about it. Jordan, this, this guy was not some random dude on Twitter either. He's got like nine hundred and fifty thousand followers. Like yes, he's, he's somebody. <laughs> Jordan Peele himself responded to the tweet and said, "Bro, put your phone down. I'm begging you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes." That made me appreciate Jordan Peele even more because I'm like, oh, good. Sure. He doesn't buy into his own sure. hype. He's like, dude, you're fucking high off your ass. Yeah. Kind of wish they brought the smoke hole scene into chapter two. Bill starts tripping, then finds himself floating in the void and sees the turtle. Uh, 
I have no idea what you're talking about. Sounds weird. <laughs> technically Scottish. Thank you so much. Hey, I'm I'm technically Scottish. Lee Winnell greater than Jordan Peele. Um, yeah. Lee Winnell's fucking awesome. Jordan Peele's great. Like I, I'm not on the Jordan Peele hate train, but this very much like Terrifier. People nowadays are way too quick to try to give people crowns. Like when Get Out came out, people were that was enough. Jordan Peele's the greatest of this genre, and it's like guys, <laughs> fucking chill. I haven't seen Nope yet. I'm seeing it tomorrow. I hope it's awesome. I'm very intrigued. Was not the biggest fan of us, so I want nothing more to walk out of Nope and go, yes, this is as good or better than Get Out. Mm -hmm. Nice. The Willmeister, speaking of killer clowns, have any of you seen the Killjoy movies? I have not either I of you. I have not. No. I've seen Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Yeah. But not that. That's a negative. You know what? I was introduced to horror. I think I mentioned this before. Halloween was my first introduction because my parents are watching it. But the show that, speaking of Jordan Peele, The Twilight Zone. I grew up watching that with my dad. And to me, mm -hmm. I love that show. It's a still relevant and ahead of its time today. And mm -hmm. I love that's the type of horror that I like that just messes with your mind. Like, just what? You didn't see that coming. So Jordan Peele, he's kind of tethering off that. And I like his horror movies. Like when I walked out of Get Out, it felt like I just watched The Twilight Zone. Yeah. So mm -hmm. in my opinion, yeah. that's what I loved about it. It wasn't the greatest mm -hmm. horror movie ever, but I love that it was very layered. There's so yeah. many narratives you know, socially, everything like that. But I'm like, this felt like a Twilight Zone film. Yeah. And that's all I got to say. But that's what I love about him. He's, he's bringing something different to the table. Absolutely. And that's what I like, too, because even us, uh, it was just too, too big for me as far as yeah. the, the ideas. It, nothing, it didn't come together near as well as Get Out. Get Out kept it simple. And like you said, it was like a good Twilight Zone episode where it was like it was so in your face. Yes. what was going on and yet it was still kind of surprising and creative where us shot for the stars and i just ended up asking more questions by the end of it and things didn't make sense uh, yeah. but i still appreciated the creativity uh, mm -hmm. have either of you seen the trailer for that movie smile i've been seeing everybody get really hyped about that one no, no. no. um no. okay so what's this uh, airbnb shit i don't know i don't know about that one um Smile looked to me. I don't know why everybody's getting all hyped about it. Uh, what was interesting about Smile was that when they first premiered the trailer, and I think it was in the Black Phone, it was one of those like Cloverfield trailers where they just mm -hmm. showed somebody walk past a guy in like a, a mental ward, and he's sitting there like this, and then she's like, "What the fuck?" And she looks back in the room, and he's doing oh. this, and then it just says Smile, and then that was it. And it was one of those hey, good old teaser. fashioned. Yeah, it was one of those good old fashioned teasers where it's just like, <laughs> you know, nothing. Then they released the actual trailer like a week later. If you would have told me it's uh, truth or dare two, I would have believed you. It just kind of looked like that same gimmick where people just have that weird grin. Uh, so oh, I yeah. I don't have any expectations for that movie. Um, hopefully it's cool, though. Uh, the Airbnb one, though, I'm not familiar with what that mm. movie is. Um <laughs> this airbnb shit <laughs> <laughs> always been a fan of jordan peele as a comedian but as a horror creator i think i'm mixed i thought us was overrated but i love what he did with twilight zone all right yeah barbarian is huh? the name of the airbnb airbnb horror movies called barbarian barbarian Oh, I think I have seen the trailer for that. Who, who's the fucking who, who's the guy who's in that? There's an actor that is just kind of starting to get a name. For it. No, I think it's I think it's Bill Skarsgård. I think that's who it is. It's Bill Skarsgård with an Airbnb or something. It did look interesting. That one did look okay. interesting. That one's got I my attention. A 12 minute short about a lesbian couple who stayed in an Airbnb. And it's <laughs> atrocious. <laughs> yeah, what, what's what, uh, hunting season has been in pre-production for what four years? <laughs> <laughs> You're really on the outside of this one, uh, oh, um, Rudy. We'll fill you in Please. here in a minute. Please, um, Orphan. Have you guys too. have you guys seen Orphan, the original? Yeah, yeah. Pre -twist. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the sequel? Have you seen the trailer or the prequel? Excuse me. Kind of like no. the the same actress is playing the orphan in this, right? Yeah. That's yeah, and it's a prequel. She's older. Yeah, so they, I'm like, how are they gonna do that? Well, they made they made a big deal about the fact that they only used practical effects to de-age her. They didn't do the whole deep fake thing. 
And on one hand, I'm like, that's commendable. And on the other hand, I watch the trailer and I'm like, she looks old as fuck. I know. Like, <laughs> that was a whole what made the first one special. So if we know the gimmick, mm. like, I don't know. I'm not. I'll check it out. On I would be Twitter. more interested in it if I did not know that the director of this was the guy that made the boy two. Oh, God. Mm. And I'm not saying that somebody can can't make a shit movie and then turn around and do something great. But when that's all I have to go off of, my faith is not high. Expectations are like down mm-hmm. here. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay, well, we will go ahead and wrap it up now, guys. Thank you to everybody that's watched us. I think this might be the the highest view count I've had in a live stream. Uh, we were up in the 800s. So Whoa. thank you to everybody, uh, all you that Halloween that fanatics. H, that H bomb. Yep, there you go. Everybody come back in October because I'm going to whore out like a motherfucker when this movie comes out. You're going to have rankings and videos going at you <laughs> left and right. So, uh, yes. Uh, as far as going around the, the circle here, Rudy, anything coming up on the channel? Um, I know you said you got a live stream later tonight, but anything coming up on either of your channels that you want to plug really quick? Um, well, uh, the movie channel, I'm still working on some things, nothing to announce, but on the other channel, um, I'm going to do a live tonight. I'm going to be reviewing dating profiles. So if you have any questions on dating profiles, be sure to join me on that live. That's going to be fun. There you go. Uh, How but... do I pick up chicks when I'm married? Oh, that's easy. You know, call me. We'll talk about that. <laughs> but uh, as far as the movie, I'm the movie channel. I'm exploring a couple of ideas. I, I um, diving into the MCU, maybe doing a review on this fantastic film I saw called Intruder that mm. I loved. <laughs> but uh, nothing uh, to announce, man. But you know, just keeping busy on my other stuff. And please join me on TikTok if you haven't followed me there. I give a lot of relationship, marriage, just life advice in general. I'm disappointed, Rudy. You had a great little setup there for a joke with CP, and you missed it. And you said, how do I pick up chicks when I'm married? You should have said, well, you got to get sponsored by BetterHelp. Declare yourself as a male feminist. <laughs> exactly. Oh, God, how did I miss that? I was waiting. I was like, oh! this is a layup. <laughs> That's an inside oh joke God. we'll have to let CP in on. Yeah, yes, uh, we do. Apparently. We do. Okay, so real quick, uh, just a quick one before you finish. When's your next Off the Shelves? Um uh, I'm probably not going to do one at the beginning of August because I only have like maybe three Blu-rays to talk about. I haven't bought very much. Will I get heat on 4K? Probably. Um, oh, you did it twice. So thank you. But yes, that is the answer. Uh, CP, I know you're in limbo right now. Yeah. But uh, is there anything coming well, that we can talk um, about? If, if those of you who don't know, I, I, I put up the who would like that for base moi which is french for rape me or fuck me however you want to put it and we're demonetized yeah (laughs) yeah yeah yeah, as as is that review um and i have another movie that whenever i i i i have everything situated i i will be doing it from here uh i'll be doing live streams and everything but i will have another who would like that about a Korean movie called Bedeviled, about Ooh. a woman who uh, is, is deviled, is uh, gets taken advantage of. She's in a in a in a shitty relationship. I mean, that's what all these movies are. Woman gets gets R word, and then uh, you know gets revenge, yeah, yeah. and uh, it, it's pretty fucking gruesome. Nice. You really <laughs> screwed yourself with that whole series. You were like, this will be fun, and now you're stuck. Yeah, but it's not like yeah. you said you like Chucky's mouth in front of 800 people. <laughs> yes, there you go. There you go. Um, as far as what is coming up for me, guys, obviously we have Nope tomorrow. So you will have my review for Nope either tomorrow night or Friday morning. Safer bet on Friday morning. And then I will rank all three of Jordan Peele's films on Sunday. Um, I plan on reviewing the entire Sleepaway Camp franchise next week because there's nothing coming out. It's still summertime. And why not? So uh, that and then I have a Patreon pick video of the top. (laughs) I I don't know how many I'm going to do yet. I put 20 for a placeholder, but I have top 20. um, (laughs) (laughs) Top 20 80s horror films. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Oh man. Anyway, we got a lot of cool things coming out of this channel. So everybody, I'll put the links for CP's channel and Rudy's in the video description once I'm we're so off. 
Yes. <laughs> oh god. Oh man. So in conclusion, yes. Love that mouth. Willis Scredia for whoever is asking. W I L I S C R E D I A. Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody.